Well, here we go. Hi, everybody. Uh, oh, there's a bald guy in the corner. Don't mind him. That's just, that's, uh, that's Mark Levin, actually. Um, <laughs> welcome to the show. How are you? Let's start off real quick with something that I would like to call, now that's funny. Um, little moments where, you know, people are getting pretty media savvy out there and, uh, not the least of which, uh, <laughs> Speaker Pelosi, after having dealt with, I think, her, uh, her fair share of crap over the time that she's been in charge of the House and I think throughout her career, as any woman in politics might go through, um, this, is pre this is pretty solid. She released a statement, um, this is from the Speaker's desk, see that, a little graphic, where she refers to Kevin McCarthy as QCA. Instead of an R or a D, they replaced <laughs> the R with a with a Q. That's that's and it's pretty dead on, by the way. That's pretty sweet. Um, fails to lead Hans Keys to party to green, um, and this is you know because he's not going to do anything to deal with her at all. He can't. I mean, on the one hand, there's a element of like leadership and. Whether or not they are actually going to... Sorry. Why is my mic so hot? It's too hot. Too hot, lady. That's a little... And then I turn it down, and then it's too low, and all that kind of stuff. It is a bit hot. I, it's because I get up and it's grill. That's what happens. Hello. All right. Man, I've been, like... I was literally running around just as I came in. Summer got back from the gym, and I was like, ran up there, and she got me a beverage, and I gave her a kiss, and then I'm running to get my shoes, and the cats are all laying out, and she literally's like, look, the cats are laying together, and so I have to, like, run in there and go, adorable. Okay, back downstairs. <laughs> so I literally, like, I'm out of bed, like, just running up and down the stairs, trying to get, the, I, do I need a fan? You mean for my hair? It's getting hot in here? Yes, right. I see, in reference to that. So anyway, so uh, super fun. Welcome to the show, everybody. Thanks for joining me today. It's, uh, it's hump day, isn't it? Yeah, it's Wednesday, right? Yeah. Tomorrow's show, of course, is later. Uh, it's an hour. It starts an hour later, 4 o'clock. And some of you uh, joined earlier for the today for the um, live uh, webinar, uh, webinar slash tech experience. I wouldn't call it quite tech support that I had with uh, Stuttering John today to kind of help him with his stream. We did get further down the field afterwards. Um, I walked him through after I stopped the stream. We got on Zoom. I took control of his computer, updated some stuff, added some things, built him four scenes in uh, in Streamlabs pretty quickly. And, and uh, so you'll see those hopefully in an upcoming episode. Um, hair's, hair's pretty pretty good right now. It's got a little bit of a layer to it. I didn't, I haven't chopped much into it, but I had a couple of areas where it was laying flat. So I got some scissors and did a little bit of that, but not much. Um, but it's, it's holding it together. I, you know, I, part of the styling now is, uh, is literally head banging. I'm, I'm almost back to the point where I have, uh, in the old days, nearly caved my head in blow drying my hair where you do that ladies you'll know what I'm talking about where you're blow drying your hair and you flip it forward to blow dry it full and you're like I almost hit my head on the counter and no one would have found me for days <laughs> so uh anyways I appreciate you guys and thanks uh to those of you that uh bought merch over the next couple days I have literally sold more merch in the last week than in the entirety of the existence of the store. I know it, and that's like saying you sold six when you'd only sold one, which is still true, but it really did make a, a you know, a, a difference. It actually made it, you know, it's like, I make, you know, I spent a lot of time making those designs and that kind of stuff, and then they just kind of sit there and you're like, oh, well, maybe one day. <laughs> so... Yes, yeah, uh, it was a merch blitz, and it's it was lovely, and I appreciate it. Um, so, and and I guess uh, eventually we should get to the point where keep it up. I also am really trying to get better, um, if I can and when I can, at um, uh, at the where is this? Hold on, um, get better at um, putting clips up of the show for people who can't take it long form. <laughs> and so 
I ended up doing that today with the help of Can't Stop Lying, um, taking some of the clips, uh, downloading, processing, shippity choppity chew, and then uploading them to YouTube so that they are readily available. Of course, to subscribers on Twitch, they're always available and they have all kinds of stuff. So it's a good time. Yes, fan source merch, indeed. So there's a bunch of new videos, short pieces and clips up um, and that are on the YouTube page at uh, infotainmentwars.com now. And where's Rudy? I don't know. I have yet to see. Um, and it might be that they're posting it today or maybe he's just decided to, you know, to not do it, I suppose. Let's see. Uh, we, I, I keep checking back in. Um, to see if his, uh, if his page is coming up. Oh, Audible, get out of here. There it is. Um, let's see, close window. Um, <laughs> censored videos, what a douchebag. Uh, yeah. So far, I mean, he's got till midnight, I guess. Maybe, I don't know, but he isn't, he, so far I have not found, you know, he hasn't put a video up. Yeah, there's not a new one. I check, here's his page. <laughs> Look at this stuff too, this douchebaggery, censored videos, you know, censored, they're censored. That's why they're available to be watched um, from his Rumble account on his website that's branded with his name that is paid for with the, I mean like for God's sakes these uh, censored censored okay okay so in terms of uh, uh, these you know these videos like none of it he hasn't put this up anywhere like he's I mean it's the same crap we've seen America under Biden. <laughs> so there's there's plenty of these things, but on today's show, uh, Eric Trump and Sean Hannity vie for uh, most childish haircut. Um, Mike Pillow gets a second shot at Newswax. P P Claymation character from Christmas Special um, finds out the hard way he's allergic to shellfish. Man confused at bus stop. Is not convinced that this isn't his home. Um, sorry, say what I said about the last guy. <laughs> and Bangino with the this is the, the name of this one is the greatest lie of all. This is the biggest lie of all. Bangino is happening to me. I I cannot, no, I will not get sucked into singing Whitney Houston. I, I will not. I cannot. And I'm uh, oh, sorry, okay. I will not. Don't do it. I will always love you. All right, it's going to happen and it's going to I'm going to regret it later. All right. <laughs> well, I sit with Eric and Sean and I wish they both would be gone. And I don't know what this pen is for, but don't let your ass get hit by the door. All right, this will be terrible. It's going to be, don't, don't get, don't. All right, here we go. <laughs> here, let's dive in. According to another file. Oh, quit it. I don't need two sources of this in my ear. According to this, what? According to what? FoxNews.com story, the Biden administration. Former colleague of Hunter Biden, defense attorney. Dun, dun, dun. Imagine if they cared about this kind of stuff when Trump was running things.
I'm sure Sean Hannity will be running a uh, a segment very soon about new Trump attorney uh, refused to prosecute Bill Cosby. I'm waiting with bated breath. Tration just appointed an assistant attorney ties, we understand it, to Hunter Biden, who's been seen a lot at the White House in recent days. In fact, yeah, you mean where he has, where his, his father works? <laughs> We've seen, uh, we saw Eric and Don Jr. there a lot too. They never told us where their money comes from. Hmm. In fact, the acting AG was once a colleague of Hunter Biden's defense attorney. Now, remember, the president's son is currently facing... Oh, thanks, Angie. I think that's why my hair has so much body is because I was banging my head to the merch song. A federal criminal investigation for international money laundering and tax evasion. No. You don't know that. You're making that up. You know, it's a tax issue. You don't even know if there's any there there yet. The investigation was started under Trump, so automatically suspect as far as I'm concerned. Uh, but there was no international money laundering part of it. Unless you have an inside scoop, Sean, and I would love to hear who your anonymous source is. This after years, as we have chronicled since January of 2018, of accept... But by chronicled, he means made up, pulled out of his ass. Oh, thanks. Um... <laughs> Ooh, that's a lot. Millions and millions and millions of dollars, let's see, from Chinese nationals, shopping sprees, a $3.5 million wire transfer, Russian oligarch, Ukraine. Uh, Russian, you mean the mayor's wife of Moscow, the three point that went to the company, not to Hunter, that she paid them for investment information, they, they helped her, or passed on her. We don't know whether they did business with her, because she, you know, it was like a... If you want us to look at your shit, you're going to have to pay us to go through all the where your money should go and you're going to have to pay for the service. They she did. She's now the richest woman in Moscow. So, uh your problem is with their capital success. Ukrainian oligarch, money for cars and other sketchy foreign nationals on top of Burisma and top <laughs> do, do you have a do you have a feeling he's just freeballing? All of this, and by the way, damn it, I don't know how many times I have to tell you this, Sean. It is pronounced. Pronounced. That's right. It is pronounced. The Burmese executives. So this uh, Burmese, Burmese. They say pronounce it Burmese. So yeah, okay. <laughs> For the Bank of China deal, could you just imagine the hysteria from the mob, the media? Uh, and the big tech companies allowing all the stories in the world to pass through. If this was one of President Trump's sons, Don Jr. I'm sorry, did you do an expose about Don Jr. and Eric Trump's money? Did you, did you play part of Derek, of Derek, of Don, Don Jr., of Derek, of Bongino, of, <laughs> of Eric Trump's deposition? Eric or Barron or any of his daughters as well. Yeah, Baron. Yeah, that's what we'd all jump on with both feet. The minor. Well, Ivanka, Tiffany goes on from there. Anyway. Does it? It goes on from there? He has other children we don't know about, Sean? Joining us now from the Trump Organization, Eric Trump, sir, Harry. But first interview, I think, since well, sir, uh, all this has gone on. You're watching this madness. You're also watching Joe Biden. Get your initial thoughts. Yeah, yeah uh... Uh, Listen, my initial thoughts are, I mean, Sean, just look at what he's accomplished in the last couple of days and how disastrous for our country it's been. It's cost thousands and thousands of jobs. Look at XL Pipeline, right? I mean, something that... Yeah, the XL Pipeline. It's, you know, if you don't know, it's just one of the bigger pipelines. Dude, they got rid of the XL Pipeline. Um, so all the, oh, the, like, anybody who wants a large garment or smaller will be fine, but any of the XL, 2XL, 3XL shirts, I don't know how they're going to get to the store. <laughs> Look what he's even done. It's been disastrous. That would have been amazing for this country, for the energy independence of this country. The only person... Why? Eric, it's Canadian shale oil, you moron. ...happy about the cancellation of the XL pipeline is... The key, you mean the Keystone XL pipeline? Is there another? Sorry. 
Warren Buffett, because now all the fuel is going to go on his big trains across the country where it could have gone through a beautiful pipeline and helped this. Yeah, sometimes I, I find myself, if I'm ever alone with a pipeline, they're so beautiful. I don't know. It's hard not to, to tuck my shirt. Nation and kept gas prices down. Look at what they're doing with immigration. Yeah, he kept gas prices down. By screwing up the pandemic so much, no one could drive anywhere. So gas prices cratered. Right? They canceled the wall. As Biden says, there's not going to be another inch of wall built in this country. Who does that benefit? That certainly doesn't benefit uh, the, Amer the American people. It's a waste of money. The wall doesn't need to be any bigger. Millions of Americans who are out of work. That doesn't benefit mm -hmm. our population. That yeah, we're going to have all these people who are building. Who's going to be, if, if, if you're not building the wall or a pipeline, what good are you? It doesn't benefit a nation that's going through a pandemic, not knowing who's coming into the country. It doesn't benefit. We don't, yeah, or leaving. Benefit, you know, the safety of our neighborhoods with cartels and, 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 and. and yeah, I know. You guys, your, your friendly neighborhood cartel, it's just, it's been really difficult dealing with. If you guys, like the cartel down the block, if they start making too much noise during the broadcast, let me know. Certainly, um, you know, bad people who smuggle drugs across a border. I mean, look. A border? Oh, so consider yourself on notice, Canadians. What this guy's doing. I mean, uh, it, Paris what? Climate oh. Agreement, another one, you know, Sean. So we're going to start paying for all the environmental problems of, of, of China again. We're going to start paying for all the environmental problems of, of India again. And you go down the... Uh, No. We weren't before, we're not now. I mean, I broke down the whole... <sighs> on my YouTube page, I literally just posted a video where we went through the whole Rudy Giuliani thing where I actually brought up the text of the Paris Accord. I would, I could go into it again, but you can watch the video or just... Eric's a moron. ...the list, and, and honestly, I think people are going to miss Donald Trump really quickly. I think they're going to miss it. <laughs> oh my God, it's loud. Why is this playing so loud? Good Lord, man. I will turn that down just so that it's not driving some people, some folks crazy, but good heavens. Um, I had to, un I literally, hold on. Bonk. I'll pop that out so it doesn't drive anybody crazy. Right, really, really, really quickly, because some of these policies that they're enacting, these executive orders in a 40, yeah. 40 in the first day. Uh crazy. I mean, it's amazing. It's like, who who does executive orders? I mean, the executive ordering, the ordering of executives. I don't even know what order these executives are coming in. You know what I'm saying? Eric, explain what an executive order is. Break it down. Just tell me what it means. Tell me your dad would never do anything via executive order because he doesn't need to. It doesn't have to. Please, please break it down. Please, Eric. Um, our madness, Sean. They're just madness. Well, it's madness. Know, it's, it's interesting. I think the people that will miss him the most probably in the end are going to be the media mob because. Uh... You mean you? <laughs> Hold on one second. Uh, sidebar, Your Honor, if I may. Um, let's see. Thanks. Ratings. Drop. Um, that should do it. There you go. Um, my dear friend Diana Falzone is one of the people who uh, wrote this lovely little article for the Daily Beast. Fox News ratings freefall is a self-inflicted wound, insiders say. Signaling a seismic shift in the media landscape as it defeated uh, President Trump, hibernates in a strangely silent exile in Mar-a-Lago. Uh, Fox News' two-decade-long winning streak came to an abrupt end Tuesday, with rivals CNN and MSNBC claimed the number one and number two rankings, respectively, in all of cable television. Um, uh, who, what mob? I'm sorry, Sean, what mob is missing? Uh, what mob? Your father huh? calls him Sleepy Joe. I call him the weak, struggling frail, cognitively struggling Joe Biden who said 300. Really? Really? So, so when, every time you mention him, you say struggling twice? <laughs> oh my Lord. Okay. At least I'm hearing that. Okay. It's better. <laughs> it, uh, seriously. Okay, it's hot. I don't know why it went up like that. That's very strange. They're messing with you. Is this a little better? Is that better? I think it's because I'm loud. It might be because I'm very spicy today. Is that better? Is it better, better, better? Okay, thank you. Thanks very much. Sorry about that, guys. <laughs>
Tell us, wait, I want to hear Sean Hannity's nickname for Biden now. Joe Biden said 300 Americans twice are going to get the vaccine by summertime. I'm like, okay, twice, twice are going to get the vaccine. Hold on, back Frail, up. cognitively struggling Joe Biden. Well, you know, it's, it's interesting. I think the people that will miss him the most probably in the end are going to be the media mob because, uh, as your father calls him, Sleepy Joe, I call him the weak, struggling frail, cognitively struggling Joe Biden who said 300 Americans twice are going to get the vaccine by summertime. I'm like, OK, catch up, Joe. 300 million have to get two doses. You understand what's being said. No one is going to walk up to Biden and say, you, you said 300 Americans are going to get vaccinated by summer and have him go. Yeah, that's what I mean. 300. We're sticking to 300. Nobody, no more than 300. And if, we, if anybody else got them, they don't get them. That's what Trump would have done. Um, but there's been nothing but from the day your father and Melania Trump came down the escalator at Trump Tower. It's been never-ending harassment for your dad, your, you. Aww. Never-ending harassment? I'm sorry. Did anyone question his nationality from before he ran for office? Did anybody, like, we questioned his character because he's a shitty human. Your family, Don Jr., Ivanka, every baron even, Melania, everybody. Every, every, every baron? Maybe there were more. Sean, are there more bar are there more children than Ashley, we know of? Your dad, your does he have does he have multiple barons? You, your family, Don Jr., mm -hmm. Ivanka, every baron even, Melania, everybody. And it can Every Baron. Climb every baron. All right. Continues now. We know the outcome of this latest charade. I played the double st It's pronounced charade. Standard, and I'm just curious, as you hear the remarks of Democrats and compare them to the remarks of your dad, what your thoughts are. Yeah, yeah, uh, thank you for setting up me up with the previously discussed uh, question that your producer provided me with so that I could front load my answer into my cranium. Um, as, and, and I beg your pardon if it comes out a little slow because it is surrounded by marshmallows. Listen, Sean, I was there, you know, 20 minutes after election, 20 minutes after election day on, in you know, 2016, it was a beautiful day. I remember the Washington Post writing that story, which is this is the, you know, this is the minute that impeachment begins. And they tried and they tried to get him with the Russia hoax and they tried to get him with Ukraine. Yeah, it was. We, we now find that if Rod Rosenstein hadn't run interference for him, we would have discovered the financial dealings that he had, and they're still looking into them. Bye. And they tried to take down Kavanaugh, and they tried to get him again, and they tried to manufacture everything. They didn't try to take down Kavanaugh. Nobody, nobody tried to take down Kavanaugh. They tried to stop him from being put on the Supreme Court because of his attitude towards women previously. That was a big concern. And especially women's right to choose and his control, his idea about control over women's bodies made him a suspect addition to the SCOTUS, especially when you pair him with Amy Coney Barrett. And they were showing that his ad aversion to women being in control of their own body seemed to, at least uh, according to witnesses, tie to his behavior throughout his life, that it was a pathological idea that he had about women not being in control of their bodies or uh, consent being a thing, as it were. And they weren't trying to take him down. He could have stayed right where he was. You just don't get to be on the SCOTUS. It's, the, it's a lifetime appointment. You don't think they're going to crawl up your ass with a microscope? Thing, you know, under the sun against my father, against all of us. They do it every single day. They continue to do it. Even when... Um, maybe... Um, maybe, maybe stop... Breaking the law, asshole, I think is the uh, quote. <laughs> He's a private citizen. They're still trying to impeach him. I mean, that's how kind of deep this whole thing goes. And it's they want to tar and feather the man. Uh, they know he did a great job for this nation. They know that there's never. They want to tar and feather the man. Stop breaking the law, asshole! <laughs> Been a more beloved political figure in our country's. <laughs> I what? Excuse There's you? never been a more beloved political figure in our country's history. There's well, he might be right there. I don't know how many figures have actually been president. <laughs> Curious little word, but it, really?
You really think that? This nation, they know that there's never been a more beloved political figure in our country's history. There are 75 million Americans who would follow him to the end of Earth. I mean, they, they love... What? That's not what we elect in this country. I, I don't want people that you would follow to the end of the Earth. I want people who would support the Constitution, maybe with their lives, that, that would be the most I think you could ask of anybody in a free democracy. I'm not looking for, like, he's basically saying if Trump set up a Jonestown, he, you know, like, it would be a, it would be huge, huge. The man, they love what he stands for. They love that he, what does he stand, what does he stand for? What does he stand for? America first? No, nah, I don't think so. He's a fighter. Uh, that he carried that fight largely alone. Oftentimes, he had to fight for the entire Republican Party, right? Because they weren't uh -huh. doing a whole lot of... <laughs> now you have a lot of good fighters, but you... They weren't doing a whole lot of what? Kissing his ass? How could they... If, if they kissed his ass any harder, he'd be walking around with just shoes hanging out of it. He didn't back then, and, and people love that about him. People love that about... And, and then you look at Biden, by contrast... He doesn't have any of those traits. He's not doing great things for this nation. His heart's not in the right place. As you said, he's probably... His heart's not in the right place. His heart is not in the right place. Please, Eric, tell us wh why Biden's heart is not, not in the right place. Not 100% there. He's not. I, I don't think he is. His policy... Oh, we're going back to dementia now. He's not 100% there. Man has a stutter. Look at his policies. These are, are disastrous, but... They want to tar and feather the man. They want to do everything they can to not have him be- Why, why is the tarring and feathering a, a, still a thing? Why would you bring that up multiple times? I, okay, I'm sorry. I forgot. Uh, Eric gets caught in a loop sometimes. A political force. What, ab uh, what about Tiffany? Let's, excuse me. There's no room for Tiffany anymore, chat room. The, we have multiple barons to deal with. In the future. And honestly, they're only ingratiating- my father's base even more because every single time they go off on one. They're, uh, honestly, they're only ingratiating my father's base. Hmm. One of these charades. Thanks, Beth. You know, they, they expose the party, the, you know, the, the radical left for exactly who they are, Sean. And um, who are know, they? They can be evil and they can be mean well, and they be, can be calculating. Know, oh, they're mean and evil and calculating. And, and, and uh, oftentimes will, they have a cauldron. And what do they do? <laughs> I love how, first of all, do you not love the fact that they're all upset about name calling and, you know, uh, ad hominem attacks? Considering who his father is and how he behaved the entirety of his presidency and during both campaigns, that, w that we're supposed to be, like, I'm cool with being better than the ad hominems because, you know, we are. But at the same time, um, Eric has a big, dumb face. <laughs> According to another oh, Fox News. No, but largely alone. Oftentimes he had to fight for the entire Republican Party, right? Because they weren't doing a whole lot. I'm of not watching this twice. And, and then you look at Biden by contrast. His, his policies are, are disastrous, but they want to tar. His policies are disastrous. Ten days in. Ten days in. Hold on one second. I have to, uh. Turn this on and then on and then we go. Uh, all aboard the Hyperbole Express is now leaving the YouTube station. If you want to join in or share the show, thanks very much. And um, and by the way, um, thank you, Beth. And thank you to Lion of Judea. Appreciate it from the indebted guy. Thank you. Oh, oh right on. Um, cool. Well, anything I can do to like specify a lesson, I'm glad to jump in there with it, uh, you guys. Burn feather the man. They want to do everything they can to not have him be a political force in the future. No, they just want to deny him the right to run again. He can be a political force. He has the right to free speech and all that kind of stuff. But he has shown himself to be ethically incapable of running the country without uh, dumping all of our taxpayer dollars on his own properties and running the place like a casino. And honestly, they're only ingratiating my father's base even more because every single time they go off on one of these charades, yeah, you know, they, they expose the party. They they expose the party as one of these, like, hey, nice to meet you. We're just ingratiating the, ourselves. You know, the, the radical left for exactly who they are, Sean. And, um, you know, mm -hmm. they can be evil and they can be mean well, and they be, can be calculating. You know, and, consistent and, uh, here. 
you know, like I'm playing the yeah. I'm playing the montage of all these Democrats. Go out and fight. Go out and fight. And it, I'm reading this nonsense yeah. of the Democrat. President Trump said, "Fight like hell." They all say the same term. You heard Kamala Harris's comments, Joe Biden's comments, Chucky Schumer's threats to Supreme Court justices. Sean, Maxine you missed Waters, so many I'm too, gonna though. take your dad Look out. At, Sean, you didn't even see these. Sean, check these out. Tonight. Who cares if they weren't standing right there in front of a mob that they had told to stop the steal, inferring that what was going on in the Capitol was a crime and that they were going to be responsible for stopping the commission of that crime, which was actively happening. And he said, we're going to walk down there and I'm going to go with you. We're going to walk down peacefully and patriotically. But when we get there, you're going to have to fight like hell. You're going to have to be strong. And we're going to give them a lot of the courage that they need. And, and if Mike Pence is there and he doesn't do what we need him to do, I'm not going to be very happy with him. But right. But what about Eric Holder? What about them. Eric Holder? How about you kick them when they're down? You, you run up to them and you kick them when they're down. I mean, they're... Yeah, we can tell the difference between a metaphor and the incitement. I mean, it's why I don't use that kind of language when I'm talking about it, because I know it walks into, it allows people like Eric Trump to m use the actual violent rhetoric. This is like a, a, a school shooter saying, my friend said his parents were going to kill him if he showed up late. So I killed him. I mean, his parents were going to kill him. Right? Okay. There's so many of them. The hypocrisy. They, Thanks, Sean, you know it. We've talked about this a million times. The things that get said about me and the things that get said about Don and Ivanka and Tiffany and Barron and our whole family and all of us. I mean, there is... All of us, which are, are there, again, are there more of them? And secondly, um, I, do the same things get said about... I'm sorry, Eric. Is there video of Barron saying you got a lot of deals in China and you get most of your money from Russia? Because I know there's video of you and Don saying that stuff. A, a, a double standard in this country, a massive double standard. There's unequal justice in this country. You mentioned it. That's right. No justice, no peace. No justice, no peace. Like the chance of that coming from Mar-a-Lago right now are just overwhelming. I mean, the, the, the march for Mar-a-Lago as they, uh, you know, hold hands crossing the Jeffrey Epstein Bridge. Um with the new, you know, DOJ guy, you know, assistant DO, you know, head of the DOJ who's happened to represent Hunter Biden or, you know, I mean, you see that. No, that's not what happened. You just heard that from Sean and he's supposedly an associate or a former associate of his. He didn't go any further. So you basically just had to extrapolate. And by the way, this is how Fox News works. Within a couple of hours, Eric, Eric oh my God. Thanks. Thanks, moms. Um, all of like in two hours on Fox news, they will have a bunch of Eric, you know, like Trump quotes of him going, Eric Trump even said it. The guy who's running the DOJ or the head of the DOJ right now is, uh, Trump is, uh, Hunter Biden's former defense attorney. Can you imagine my father ever tried to do that? There, there is ever, ever unequal, um, you know, balance of justice, justice in this country and, and, and how, yeah, it's terrible. Yeah, it's like you can't, I mean, Trump's get pulled over all the time. You know, they get arrested for a busted taillight. It's just terrible. They can't go anywhere, you know. Half of America sees it, and it's quite frankly disturbing to them. Yeah. Um, all right. You know, it's okay. interesting. Let me ask uh, you. Yeah. All right. Anyways, okay. Uh, sorry, Eric, you were, you were saying? Question. If your dad decided to run in 2024 for mayor of West Palm Beach... You're, if he comes to you and he asks you your thoughts, what would you say to him? Listen, what my father did is something that no political figure has ever done in American history. And, and he changed this country and he changed it for the better. And he taught people how to... No, he didn't. He didn't teach people how to fight. Stop acting like you lived through World War II, you dick. Fight, and he gave Americans the greatest civics lesson. Um, and it's exactly, frankly, what this... That's true. That, that may be true. Who of us thought that we could sit through two impeachments in our lifetime and learn the inner workings of this? And by the way, because of his phony attacks on on voting across the country, I know I now know more about the swing states' voting laws 
than I ever did. So thanks a lot, Trump. It's, it's almost like saying, you know, the Manson family taught us all more about window locks than we ever thought we'd know. Country needed. He's really a father to America, and I'm incredibly proud of him. <laughs> He's a father to America. Ew. God help us, we were all raised like you, Eric. Him and I would be right by his side again, as painful as it was, Sean, and you know how painful it was. Yeah, it's very painful to be right next to Donald Trump, especially downwind. As painful as it was, I would be right by his side, um, encouraging him because he's a... Uh, He's an amazing guy, and I've never been more proud of him. I've just never been more proud of him. Well, that doesn't say much. I don't know how proud of you of him you were before this. And pride, you know, especially the way their ego works, him being proud of his dad is like, I'm proud of the money we made. Eric Trump, thank you. Good to see you again. Thanks for being with us. Yeah, so good. Thanks, Eric. I think, I, thanks for the civics lesson. When we come back, Lindsey Graham has a dire warning for the Democrats. And they're. Oh, yeah. I, yeah, you know what, Sean? Let me get right back. Oh, never mind. Um, so, after he was kicked off of Newsmax, Mike Pillow have is canceled. brought back on, got, got mad, and they brought him back on. To give him his little flail. I'm curious to see if they have to dump out or they they kept him on a short leash. The My Pillow account of our good friend Mike Lindell. That happened just yesterday, in fact. Oh my God. What well, how am I even gonna know how to buy something if I can't see an ad on Twitter? And Mike, thanks for coming on the show. Good to have you. And thanks for not being in a dentist's office or waiting to get your your toenails done or something like that. Again, obviously you by the way, uh, excellent, um, where is it? I have to slide it over. Excellent dog painting. You did not miss a number. Good for you. On Rob Schmidt tonight, taking the Schmidt out of the news. We were on the network earlier in the day. We made some- uh, Hi, Rob Schmidt. Uh, waves there. We'll leave it at that. But you and Newsmax have always- <laughs> Hey, it was on, you were on Newsmax earlier. Listen to this. Waves there. We'll leave it at that. But you and Newsmax Wait, have back always- up. Have you again? Obviously, you were on the network earlier in the day. We made some uh, waves there. We'll leave it at that. But you and Newsmax. Yeah, it just it made some waves. I've always had a very good relationship. Uh, we didn't have a chance to have a full conversation about you being canceled and targeted by big tech. Why? Why didn't you? Why didn't you, Mike? Why didn't you? Why, why didn't you, Schmitty? Why? 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 Why didn't you get to have a conversation with him? Is it because the hosts didn't try to keep him on? Track? Is it, sorry, was it their fault? Was it the network editor's fault who walked out? Why, why didn't you get to have a full conversation? It's one of the biggest issues we're really concerned about here at Newsmax. Yeah, so worried about it since we're an all digital basically network and um, we're only, you know, paid for by wealthy donors largely. I want you to just tell us what exactly Twitter has done and how it's impacted your business. What has show us on the doll where Jack Dorsey touched you? Well, they took down my personal one too, and then yeah. uh, just yesterday, I actually put up on my so on uh, my pillow account. I put down, "Hey, you guys, here's what I posted on my personal." White, um which is a violation of the terms of service if they suspend your personal account and you hop over to your business account and start using it like a personal account, you get ditched. Happens to everyone. You're not special. Why is this just you being targeted? Why Jack took this down, and it was a nice letter from one of my employees uh, because my integrity is getting attacked everywhere right now. And uh, they took it. I'm sorry, your employees? Are you going to post in a... a, a a letter from a former employee, a former employee who calls you out? Down in about five minutes. And so now... what? Somebody asked in the chat room, uh, Hal, what does, my, uh, um, what does Mike Pillow have to do with politics? Um, from, on a practical sense, next to nothing. No more so or less so than any well-known uh, product, hawk, you know, salesman or anybody who, you know, whatever their job is. I'm not a shut up and sing kind of a guy. If somebody wants to talk about politics and they've got some input, I'm all for it. The The difference was is that Mike Pillow paid to have these giant buses wrapped with Stop the Steal and brought dozens of people to the Capitol that took part in the riot. He paid for it. Now, it's funny. All the news media was reaching out to me today going, well, how are you going to get your messaging out there? How are you going to... Oh, were they? <laughs> 
Was CNN on the phone? Did MSNBC, did Fox, did Fox call you? Dude, how are you going to end up? <laughs> what kind of a dickhead? I actually, maybe they did. Maybe they did actually call him. They're like, hey, Mike, how are you going to get your message out if you lost your Twitter account? Goodbye, click. <laughs> talk to your customers. And you know what? Our customers have always... How are you going to talk to your customers? Probably just on Parler. Stepped up right now. It's amazing. Just like Newsmax yeah. did, you know. Um, the other day, you know, you guys had the promo code Newsmax. Right. Uh, <clears throat> and now we know why he got a second bite at the apple. Go to MyPillow.com and you saved up to 66%. And you can still do that. You guys have been great. And everyone out there has been great. You know, these uh, it's not just Twitter. You're right. You know, the one thing about Twitter... All the bots and trolls that then these companies that are on Twitter, right. those guys uh-huh. are the ones that attacked all these box stores and stuff. So then and it just called. Yeah, it was all. Yeah, so so Russian troll farms. Is that what that was? What they had turned on you? Mm hmm. We're supposed to. Thank you, Sasha. That's amazing. Cancer culture just keeps on spreading. Yeah. And- oh, my God. Oh, my God. Not cancel culture. Like you said, we, we, how many of these people are actually real? How many people are actually offended by any- Yeah, I'm not even sure I'm real. Are you real? Is, is, is Mike Pillow real? How do we know what's real? What is real anymore? Any of the things that we're so worried about canceling in this society right now. All of- what was that noise? What the hell? People are actually offended by any of the things that we're so worried about canceling in this Ew. People are actually real. How many people are actually offended by any of the things that we're so worried about canceling in this? There you go. Little little Russian handkerchief, little mini. Society right now. All uh. of it is so stupid. We talked to you last week about uh, former business partners uh, <coughs> that have dropped your products from their shelves. Ah, uh, don't rub it in, guys. Just like you're just talking about. Here's the big list right here. Right. How are you and your employees weathering that storm? And, and what do you think? Well, his employees aren't weathering the storm. They're suffering in the storm. He's weathering the storm. He owns the company. I think it's next for your business. Well, I want to add one more of that list. Wayfair. Well, of course they're not for sale on Wayfair. How do you get canceled by a company that sells baby parts to the, you know, elite Hollywood so they can suck the juice out of their spines? Isn't uh, Wayfair is supposed to be the Q... Like, is in the Q mythology as the, the deliverer of codes... For the global elite. I mean, never mind the fact that, you know, the Overstock CEO may have gotten access to the Q account when it was on 8chan. That's another thing entirely. But why would you be upset that you, what are you, you mad that my pillow isn't being sold right next to baby brains? What are you talking about? Just to make sure we don't, uh, we don't forget them. Mattress Firm dropped us this week. And uh, Shop HQ and... Yeah, add, yeah, add the other ones. Don't leave them off. Minnesota, so... I already posted who Q was. It's Jim Watkins. They just keep piling on. I think they sit, they sit out there and they go, okay, now we can do it. My, my pillow won't know us and notice. But you know what? I want to tell them they are the biggest ones that are the losers because the, they're the ones losing the real customers. And they end up coming right to my pillow now. And great companies uh, um, are stepping up that are out there like news. Yeah, I mean, honestly, uh, are there pillows anymore? Max and like other companies that have put the word out to yeah. help my pillow and everyone everyone's been buying and we've been so busy we actually are hiring right now for shipping <laughs> and all of my employees think ew yeah i don't need to see video of him humping the pillow Even each and every one of you out there that have bought my pillow. seriously this whole like it looks like it's crying like i half expect him to hold it back and like quatu is in well, it you know we have over 110 products too we're not just uh it's not just pillows anymore. Yeah, no. Kidding. Yeah, it's not my. It's not my pillow. It's my stuff. Kidding. And my parents have one of your pillows. In fact, yeah. You, I'm glad to hear you guys are hiring and that and that the business is, is surviving yeah. this because it is scary. I'm- they have one. Your parents, what do they share? One my pillow. They're not even king size. They're like average. They're normal size pillows. Was your dad get one? And your mom's not allowed? Or does your mom have one? And your dad just sleeps on a rock because he's, he's that tough? One? One. They have one. Oh, so they... Oh, I'm sorry. I didn't realize. M- Mike Pillow gave everybody at Newsmax 
a free pillow and you re-gifted it to your parent. I mean, it really scares a lot of people. And that's why everybody's walking around on eggshells because they're worried that if that's that's true. Mainly because I hear it's good for you. It, it keeps your feet from aging. If they don't cancel you, somebody's going to cancel them. But finally, yeah, I'm mean, like, at what point does the canceling stop? I, I, uh, you don't cancel me. I cancel myself. I just want to ask, uh, as 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 far as the impeachment, we spent the the top of the show talking about the impeachment brief dropped oh, no. today by the Democrats. What are your thoughts on this pending trial politically? To you, does this seem like a loser for Democrats to put Donald Trump on trial now? Uh, yeah, gee, uh, how's he going to go on this one? I'm so glad you posted that picture. Well, thank you, Sarah. The, am I, is there any point where can I, what, what are our guesses? Because I'm not sure, guys. I, I really am not. I, um, is he going to say it's a, oh, come on. Is it yes or is it no? Is he going to think it's going to work out for Democrats or it's not going to? Uh, well, I think it's a, uh... It's probably the worst thing I've ever heard of anybody doing, and it doesn't matter what side. The, it's the worst thing I've ever heard of anybody doing. This man used to smoke crack. It's the worst thing I've heard of anybody doing. Uh, um, so I'm guessing you didn't watch the, the, the new Zodiac series on Netflix, or perhaps haven't seen the History Channel in, uh, you know, or sorry, the Hitler Channel in a while. The worst thing. So you're okay. on, he's not even in office. And, and uh, but I will, there's something coming out Friday that's going to really help him, a documentary. Friday's the day. I'm waiting for it. Oh boy, he's been, te he teased this and then he's teased it again. Friday's the shit. I'm excited. Friday's going to be a crazy show, kids. He's releasing a giant attack on the Democrats' attempt to impeach the president. It's going to be awesome. Friday is the day when we're all... And it totally won't be a shitty repackaging of Sidney Powell's Kraken wrapped in, a, in, in twine and dropped on a doorstep in a, in a bag set on fire with dog poop. I put together and I was going to see it. I think that's going to help. And I, I just think it's a shame of what... It is a shame. It's a shame. They're doing. Thank you, Francie. Uh, one of the greatest presidents, if not the greatest in history. And I, why do I feel like apologizing to Ronald Reagan? I don't even like the man. And all the great things he did for our country, and you treated him. You treated him so like garbage for four years. And now he treated him like garbage, and he did everything for you. And <laughs> do this, I mean, it's just God damn, this is so whiny. And the whole world's watching. It's just a yeah. shame. Understood. Yeah, and you've got a new documentary coming out Friday. We're very excited to see a new. It's a documentary. All right. Uh, what that entails, Mike Lindell. See. Oh, I'm looking forward to it too. Is it free? CEO of My Pillow. Thank you, sir, for being a good friend and for coming on Newsmax tonight. We appreciate it. By good friend, we mean thank you for paying for a good section of this uh, network so that we have to bring you on. Otherwise, and, and, let, and mention your promo code or we'll no longer have you on. No, you guys are great. Thanks a lot for having me on. You just yeah, it's so good. I feel like I learned a lot. Okay, this is going to be horrifying. Um, do we go straight to that one or, oh, God. Uh, you know what? Th this one, I think, is a little more prevalent. Now, I've never done a Tucker clip on here. Not since his nose job. I don't think. It's been years. I know I haven't done a clip on here since his, his uh, head writer was found to be writing under a pseudonym on a white supremacist website and was fired. And since, you know, he's regretted that ever since. So, um, and... I don't know why Tucker always has the look of a man who's just being told he's adopted by two fish in a tank. Ron DeSantis is the governor of Florida, the free state. Thank the what state? And he's doing what... The free, the free state. So, sorry, the, Ron DeSantis the free is, state. Ron DeSantis is the governor of Florida, the free state, and he's doing what no elected Republican... 
I'm sorry, the I was not aware up till this point that 49 of the states are not free. Oh, how will we ever, how will the people of Texas, how will we break the news to them? And we're aware of Nationwide has done. He's proposing a new... Oh, Facebook is being weird? Is it because uh, they, um, they sh shut down something or other? We're all right? That's being weird. Yeah. No, it's okay. New law that would fine big tech companies for mm -hmm. censoring political candidates. Well, um, so you would write a law that would violate their free speech as a company. So you're going to argue that companies are not people and do not have the same rights as an individual. I'm excited to hear about this. Let's let's go. Companies that remove a candidate for office would face a hundred thousand dollars in fines every. No matter what they say. So if David Duke runs and he starts posting swastikas, it's going to cost a company $100,000 to take his campaign down simply because he's running for office. <laughs> Day until the candidates access. Oh, a hundred. Oh, sorry. A hundred thousand dollars a day would face a hundred thousand dollars in fines every day until the candidate's access to the tech platform is restored. Addition well, and how big do these uh, tech platforms have to be? So let's say I'm just let's just go on a um, let's say Bruce Valanche is running for office in uh, let's see. It's just in San Francisco. Let's just go for it there. And he's running for mayor of San Francisco. And he decides he wants to reach out to a, a different constituency than he would normally be able to reach. So he decides to post in a, a, create an account on ChristianMingle.com. And on his ChristianMingle.com, he presents his, uh, his life story, his experience with his partner or partners over the years, the importance of, of gay marriage and God knows wedding cakes. And if ChristianMingle.com takes his, his account down because he's running for office, they have to pay $100,000 a day until they give it back. Oh, this wait a minute. law would require that big tech companies give advance notice before they ban users. Governor they do. They give you a warning. They all give you a warning. Ron DeSantis joins us tonight to explain this. Governor, thanks so much. <laughs> Thank you. I'm happy to be here. I am inflatable. For coming on. Did, did we characterize that correctly? Is he, was he coming on to you during the break? What happened, Tucker? What this law would do? Yeah, what, what would the law do? Explain the law to us. So you're going to use the government to force a private company to carry the campaign information of a candidate, and if they don't, because of stuff that candidate has said that violates their terms of service, you're going to find them $100,000 a day, violating their free speech, both as workers of the company and owners of the company and the company's rights itself. Um, and so at what point does Fox have to run ads from all Democratic camp, uh, campaigns lest they lose their license and be fined a hundred thousand dollars yeah and it's more than that i mean i think that we're going to do three different uh things one is protect oh boy they're going to be three different things let's first of all we're going to violate their first amendment rights in three different ways Floridians data privacy from big tech which oh. is a huge issue as you said yeah it is uh, oh 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 you've piqued tucker's interest you mean you're going to come over and clear my browser history of uh um, like how many times he's typed bow tie into Pornhub? Protect big tech from interfering in an election. And that may mean you you deplatform a candidate you don't like. Uh, two guesses as to which type of candidate big tech wouldn't like. Uh, but it also means uh, uh, doing the algorithms in a way that will suppress stories or accelerate them to benefit a candidate. That's effectively an in-kind contribution. And then the... Yeah, but it could just be the content of the story. Are you going to prove that their algorithm is about that person's name or about the issues that they find important? Because, again, that's a matter of free speech. But you're too stupid to understand this. Please continue. General protections for deplatforming uh, users. And what we're allowing people to do is bring civil suits under the Florida Deceptive and Unfair Trade Practices Statute and Anti-Fraud Statute and also allowing the state... <laughs> I love how... 
even though Tucker is clearly on the side of this whole thing, while he, of course, allegedly views himself as some sort of libertarian right wing, um, you know, spokesperson for libertarian esque. I don't know if it qualifies as libertarian, but the libertarian esque right. Um, his his oh, I'm interested in what you're saying. Face is it, I, is it just lock into place? Is this does he just have resting duh face? State attorney general to do that as well. If big tech is not applying their terms of service in a in a coherent and principled way, which they almost never do. Oh, I'm sorry. So coherent and principled. So now Ron DeSantis and his uh, and his wingman Tucker Carlson want to find companies who uh, aren't, aren't coherent and ethical. Do you think this applies to Dow Chemical or BP? Probably not. So we think that this is something that Floridians want. Violates the Constitution of the United States and of Florida. Protection from. And I think it'll end up being a really good first step. I mean, I, I think they just freeze a picture of Tucker Carlson. He goes and poops and comes back and the guy's still talking. There's always been the question, what do you do about this? I think a lot of us have thought. Yeah, what do you, what do, you do? And the, obviously what you do is violate everyone's First Amendment rights. There was something wrong yes. for a long time, uh, but to just sit back <laughs> and hope it gets better, that clearly wasn't going to work. So we're leading no. and I think it'll be good. Do, do you really? Do you really think it'll be good? No one has done anything. This is the first example of this that we have seen in this country. I know. No one, no one can do anything about this. They have a right of free speech as well. They have a right to establish a ter terms of service, modify their terms of service. In their terms of service is the right to modify those terms of service. You don't have a right to other people's platforms. In Eastern Europe, it's been tried. Who is a... In Eastern Europe, yeah, Polish Twitter is just, ah, uh, it's horrible. Opposed to this, we would love to know their names. Um, Hal Sparks, nice to meet you. I am, I am, from a free speech point of view, uh, completely opposed to this nonsense. Hi, how are you? Yes, I, Hal Sparks, someone who often uh, visits Florida for the sake of business and occasionally seeing friends and old colleagues. Um, I, I, I visit the state with some regular. My girlfriend's originally from there, as a matter of fact, and has family there. Um, but I, you know, as a resident of uh, California and, and occasionally Nevada, um, I, I oppose this idiocy on free speech grounds. And the, iron, uh, the irony of it is, is that every Republican before 2016 would think this is maniacal garbage. <laughs> well, stay tuned, Tucker. Is this <laughs> we don't know who's opposing it. We'll see. It's going to be a big fight in the legislative session. Hope Gee, why would it be a big fight? <laughs> it's the first time anybody's tried this. It's written with crayons and hammers. It's some of the dumbest legislation ever proposed. It's antithetical to the Constitution, the free exercise of democracy. But hey. Hopefully we'll be able to get a lot of support. I think most. Yeah. Hopefully. Hopefully you'll be able to get a lot of support. Good luck. Most folks do want protections for their privacy and their yes. data. I think most folks. What, what does that have to do with this? Don't tie that bill and normal, like, you can't sell my data, run-of-the-mill bullshit updates to normal laws to now we're going to use the government to force private companies to carry the message. Do you understand? Can you get a grip on the slippery slope involved in this legally? If the government of Florida can supersede the U.S. Constitution and force a private company that isn't even in their state, that operates across state lines because internet, can, if it can force them to carry the messages, it can also force them to carry child porn, automatic weapons, anything the dark web cells can now be sold on the internet because Georgia and, and Florida and North Carolina and whatever, like the states that are trying to implement some of these rules, they oh God. want protections from being deplatformed. And it's not just being... No, you don't have any protections from being deplatformed. You know what your protection from being deplatformed is? 
Start your own fucking platform. Ban from Twitter or something. As we've seen, these t these companies can act. They can collude. They can deny you if you're a small. What do you mean collude? No, I saw no collusion. Hashtag no collusion. All business of payment processing, uh, right. the ability to use email and text. So right. Well, so I look forward to Florida filing lawsuits against Visa for not allowing sex workers, both on the internet and in person, to use Visa's credit card system. Is that what you're worried about, DeSantis? Is that your concern? Because that's a thing. You, is that part of your law? Is that going to happen? Hmm? So what, you go to a rally that they don't like, or you engage in wrong think, and all of a sudden, your flower business is decapitated for, for a month because... Wrong think? Wrong think. How do, how do they know what you're thinking? What, what, are, what kind of social media are we talking about here? Is there a harp space laser? Jews in space. I knew it. They take action. So I think we're go we've gone down a dangerous path on this. This provides protections for individual Floridians. And no, it doesn't. It doesn't do any of that. This is just dumb. It does none of this, the sort. It does... It violates the U.S. Constitution. It would fail miserably in the courts. Even in the state courts of Florida. It violates the Florida Constitution. And I think it'll be very... What was that? Somebody said... Uh, you get another $5 for looking out for sex workers. Thanks, Hal. Well, absolutely, Sandra. I mean, I, I, I side with, uh, um, with Carlin's uh, joke, which is one of the greatest jokes he ever told. Um... If selling is legal and fucking is legal, why isn't selling fucking legal? <laughs> it's like, you know, I just always thought that was genius. So I, you know, and Lord knows with my friends who are, you know, uh, are and have been suicide girls and, and people I've known in all kinds of industries over the years, um, that I am particularly sympathetic to people wanting bodily autonomy. And that has to extend to sex workers, one would think, just by normal, but the irony that that's not what he's talking about. As a matter of fact, he will file a law to, to guarantee Visa can stop sex workers from using their platform so that, but at the same time filing the exact same law that if you, you know, use the N-word in an ad you put in the newspaper that you can't lose your web domain provider positively received but we're buckled, we're buckled up Tucker we know that there's always fights over these things uh, so stay not, dude this isn't even a fight there is no fight in this this is all PR there is no bill this is stupid there is no bill I don't care what he's presenting it doesn't go further than committee no one would be able to agree on the on the standards that would actually make this work uh, it's idiotic this is, I don't understand wh why you would even present this crap. Hold on. I've got another spam a lot in the happening. Um, eh, ba -da -ba -da, spam next. Buy this. Done. Delete. Man. Stay tuned. Yeah, I mean. Stay t stay tuned. You, he's saying stay tuned because it's a program. This is a lie. This is all, a, just understand this. This is all kabuki. This is all bullshit. There is no bill. He would never present that. This is either an audience of one message to Trump because he's now in his state and he wants the money that Trump, he thinks Trump has access to to run for office or the people that support Trump. This is all just a PR stunt because there is no bill or no functioning structure wherein a bill like this could possibly exist without violating the Constitution. Seriously. This really does set the standard for the rest of the country. It'll be fast. No, it doesn't. No, it doesn't. It would set the floor for the rest of the country. The idea that you would call Florida a free state, and then I start a company, I start my own little sidecar of MySpace, or start a social network on Ning, and somebody comes in and says, I'm running for office, I'm running for mayor of Tallahassee, 
And in the and and P.S. I'm running on a ticket that says black people shouldn't be allowed to vote. And I kick that person off. And because of equal protection under the law, this dickhead can charge me a hundred thousand dollars a day because my social media platform, which has a hundred and fifty members in it, um, what doesn't want that person on there? Are you frigging insane? This is absurd. Saying to see who comes out of the woodwork to oppose it very quickly. I'm not in the woodwork. I'm on the internet. I'm talking to you guys right now. Tucker Carlson, Ron DeSantis, you guys, are, this is the most, besides the kind of racist dog whistle or bullhorn shit that Tucker normally does, this is the most un American. An anti-democratic, unconstitutional argument this dickhead has ever had openly on his show. This is blatant. This is foolhardy and a puff piece for one. Can, if Florida, if you get this through the legislature in Florida. Yeah, if, if you sprout wings and can uh, shapeshift into a dragon and blow yourself during the, in, and while winning the, Fucking Indy, I don't know where I'm going with this. The NASCAR 500, something like that. The Indianapolis 500. If that can happen, this can happen. Look at this. All right, here's an example. Let me show you how this shit works. Standing up for what's right. That is the moniker, like fair and balanced, of this is of Tucker Carlson show. That's the phrase. Standing up for what's right. See it? Standing up for what's right. It's right there. See that? Now, when I move my finger, you're going to see the TM. Okay, standing up for what's right is a statement most people use. And when I say it um, in court, if I say I acted in self-defense and I believed that I was standing up for what's right, let's say, for example, um, then uh, it would be applicable in you know, in the court's charging of me for manslaughter or you know any kind of violent act, um, hold on one second. What is happening here? No. Um, this is so weird. Um, I get so in it. So, if I was, if if we were being, if any of us. We're being charged with a crime. And I said, they said, why did you attack this person with a claw hammer? And you said, because I believed I was standing up for what was right. That would have to be true. I would have to prove in this context that I believed that this person was, was harming that person. And I believed that I had to stop them by attacking them because I was standing up for what was right. This person was, uh, you know, endangering this person's life and this. Or that. So if I said... I'm just standing up for what's right. During the course of that, um, good God, um, like it, they're all over the place with the, uh, hold on, ban from page, ban from stream. This is so dumb. Um, uh, that if I said that, it would have to be true legally. I'd have to be cross-examined. They go, oh, really? You didn't seem to think it was... You were standing up for what was right when this happened. Do you compare that to this? Like I, they could question my motives based on what I had asserted. And my assertion was I believed I was standing up for what's right. You know what the difference between me doing that in a court of law um, in regard to being questioned and cross-examined about an, an activity I engaged in and whether it's true or not? The TM. Once you put the trademark on there, it no longer has to be true. Trademarks don't have to be true because a lot of them can't. Coke can't ever be life. You understand? Coke is life is trademarked because it's a phrase they use a lot. They don't want other people to use it. But it doesn't have to be true. So trademarks don't have to be true. As a matter of fact, by putting the TM on it, you can't be held to a standard that it's any more than the value of a label. Look at that little trademark standing up for what's right. It's a phrase. It's not the real thing? That's exactly right. Coke is not the real thing. That in and of itself is, is indicative of the, the, like, the pathetic nature of what passes for truth on Tucker Carlson's show. But this is garbage. Will it have implications for the rest of the country? No. 
I think it will because what we because you're an idiot. We found Tucker is when Florida leads and other states start following. No, they don't. No, they don't. What issue has Florida led on? Uh, so I think you will see other legislate. Name one. What? What? What is? What has Florida ever gone like? Man, Florida is ahead. <laughs> is ahead of everybody on that curve. Pictures, uh, follow suit. Um, but I also no, they don't. And why would they? This is idiotic. I think it's just a situation where. By the way, I'm now starting to understand why Tucker Carlson has this confused look on his face, like permanently. It's because every guest he has on says stupid shit like this. A very mobile society. I mean, Florida laws may actually have uh, 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 an effect on folks who, who are visiting here all the time. So I think it's going to be... A, a what? What do you mean? You're going to have a different version of Twitter for Florida? What are you, China? What are you talking about? You think you're... Oh, man, we just landed in Florida. A bunch of my... Um, my feet is suddenly full of right-wing terrorists who are running for dog catcher. It's going to have an effect one way or... Seriously, all you have to do is file to run for office in Florida, apparently, according to him, and you can, you could, you could post child porn. Why not? I mean, you're running for office, right? What's the limit? No matter what they say, the, the law isn't that, you know, they have to follow the rest of the law, according to your description. All they have to do is be running for office. And you can't take them down. It'll cost you $100,000 to pull child porn off your site because this dipshit wants to guarantee it. What are you talking about? Borders. Maybe there's a reason people are moving to Florida, just to guess. Governor DeSantis. They aren't. They're, you know why they're moving to Florida? Because they're old. That's always why they moved to Florida. Or they're Canadian and they're just visiting. Moving to Florida. Get the fuck out of here. Appreciate your coming on tonight. Thank you. <laughs> hey, welcome. It's good. I'm here. Anytime I can come on and wipe the con the con my ass with the Constitution, I'm glad to be here. Jesus Christ. I, I, I'm having a hard time believing that this was actually a segment on Tucker Carlson's show. Because this is, I mean, you have arguably Republicans uh, saying that companies and the employees they're in cannot get rid of anyone who is running for a government office. They get, the law doesn't protect people uh, necessarily who, because of their business. They could be, you know, you're deplatformed because of something you said online. It's not related to your business necessarily, you know, but you might have a fight there. You might, you know, try to get yourself reinstated. But in, according to him, if you're running for office, if you're trying to seek government office, then you are guaranteed a space on all social media platforms that are available in Florida. Christ almighty. Thanks, Tucker. Thanks, Ron Tucker. Jesus. Ron DeSantis is a moron. Go oh, God. I'm sorry. I should have warned you. That was rough. Um... Well, the virus has now killed more than 100 people oh, no. in China, What's and new on? cases have been confirmed around the world. So you don't want to frighten the American public. France and South Korea have also got evacuation plans. Which you need to prepare for and assume. Strongly warning Americans to avoid all... No Why are they intercutting this in the U.S. Right. and infected? Simulcast in Mandarin. G News 13, Real America's oh. Voice, the streaming service of the Trump Revolution, John Frederick's radio network throughout the nation. Of course, Rumble, all that, and simulcast in Mandarin. G News. Gentlemen, you will say Chinese? I don't know if he can say Chinese. I didn't know he could speak Chinese. I know, he can't. Why is he doing it in Mandarin? Hmm, why would that be? It's not available. It's not like this channel is available. Oh, it's because of the uh, anti-Chinese government uh, people at Epic News and all those folks uh, trying to get into the Asian American community around here and lie to them. I see. Okay. News GTV and blown through the firewall later in the day to mainland China. We go live immediately to di the diaspora. In fact, I just finished my weekly interview with G News GTV in Europe in mm -hmm. London. Firebrand is the book. Matt Gates is. Firebrand. 
The author, we're honored to have Matt Gates here. Okay, we've been all... Was bird brain taken? ...over this situation in Wyoming with Liz Cheney. Yeah, it's to it is the Falun Gong Network, Chip. Yeah. Walk the audience through. Today is a huge day yeah. on Capitol huge. Hill for the Republican Amazing. Party because of two yeah. situations. Congressman yeah. Green from Georgia and Liz Cheney uh, about leadership. Walk us through... Liz yeah, walk us through why you're siding with uh, Congressman Green over... Um, uh, over Liz Cheney. Please explain. Liz Cheney, and particularly, why did Matt Gates, the firebrand, everybody should go buy the Gates book, okay? Buy, buy Gates' well, firebrand, the book. Uh, it's well, not, not, don't, no. I mean, you could, why, why would you, why would everyone buy this? Oh, you're supposed to say that, right, because you're selling the book. Okay, good. All right, he wouldn't come on. He's like, will you bathe? And you're like, no. Like, all right, well, I'll come on if you'll sell my book. It's amazing. This guy's a fighter. Why does Matt Gates? If he's a fighter, why is the book so small? From one of the most patriotic uh, districts in the country on the panhandle of Florida. Why is Matt Gates? The, patri mo the most patriotic. Oh, you mean because there's more vets there, retired vets, because the land is cheap? In, in the cold. Because after World War II... They relocated a lot of vets there, and people continue to move and live there. And a lot of people are in the military over the course of you know multi generations. In the I know because my grandfather was in the military during World War II, and part of his job when he got back was arranging for housing. And they they brought a lot of people into Florida and staged them there before they sent them home. So he had to set up housing for them, and a lot of them stayed. Of Wyoming giving what I think was one of the finest speeches about populism, and particularly prairie populism, I've ever heard to what I hear is the largest audience that's ever come together for an event in Wyoming that didn't have a rodeo associated with it. How do you end up in, how do you end up in Wyoming sticking your nose in Liz Cheney's business? Well, uh, yeah, well, that's a great question, and uh, I don't know, actually. I'd only been there for an hour, and I was wearing a sweater vest. It was a mess. The people of Wyoming are great Americans, and in a lot of ways, Steve, Wyoming is... As opposed to the other Americans? I'm sorry. Are you disparaging, uh, I guess, 339 and a half million Americans? The most American of states. On the frontier, a little hard to get to. Folks are... On the frontier, a little hard to get to. And oddly enough, if you keep if you hit Wyoming and you keep going due west, you get to Seattle, a gleaming city with Google in it. It's amazing how if you just keep going, you might the frontier spirit might bring you to a shore and you might establish some ports and then there, you might have some money for education and then no, let's just, fuck it, let's just stay here and shoot moose. Tough and resilient, and I believe there is an energy. But enough about the Pawnee. Energetic populism out in this country that you hope the establishment is trying to extinguish in washington oh the establishment guys it's the establishment people who establish things are terrible anybody who establishes something god we need to call those people out we establish these truths to be self-evident that all men are in dc right now and i mean one of these battles is literally playing out today at 4 p what oh my god at the House Republican Conference. Right now you have the establishment figures like Liz Cheney, Mitch McConnell, Mitt Romney, Nancy Pelosi. People, people who've kept the party going and put more judges on the, uh, on the, in the courts than ever in American history who managed to hold off Merrick Garland and give your guys an extra seat on the SCOTUS who managed to stymie all this legislation, which is exactly what you allegedly want. But... Mitch McConnell's the fucking problem. Pelosi, right. Joe Biden. They're trying to make sure that within the eight square miles of Washington, D.C., uh -huh. the America First movement, the MAGA movement, uh, does not have any oxygen, any opportunity, because... Um, no, no one, no one, as a matter of fact, they have almost all the oxygen. The difference is QAnon. That's what's up. That's what these people are, are on about. They're worried about this crisscross between MAGA and Q, and they, they're trying to run the Q folks out while maintaining the strength of the MAGA crowd, and there does not seem to be a separation anymore. That's the problem. Our ideas are better. We ignite more energy out in the... Um, you mean fear and anger? What ideas? 
country. So my entire premise for going to Wyoming is that if this was they bought me a ticket. This is going to be a battle for the soul of the Republican Party. And if we want to win this battle, we can then then we if we have to deliver it to the dark overlord, um, we're going to have to fight like heck a doodle, not fight it on the home turf of the establishment inside the beltway. We have. Yeah, <laughs> never, never go to the the front line of the battle. Always retreat to where there are the fewest moving parts. Well, Jesus Christ, there's half a million people in the whole state of Wyoming. How is this like taking on the establishment? We have to go out into the country and we have to show that we're not going to be the out out into the country, out into the country. Go out into the go out into Los Angeles, out into the country. You went to Wyoming. There's half a million people in the whole goddamn state. Party that Ugh. goes back to the Bush years, the Cheney years, the Romney years of invading everywhere and inviting everyone across our borders illegally. Is that what they did? I'm, I'm loving the new Republican definition of the Bush years. We're going to still put our country and our people first. So that's one thing that is like sending a shock through the system of the Republicans. Yeah, it's shocking that Matt Getz would leave the safety of Florida to fly to a place that has fewer people in it than a suburb of, of Orlando. The other major force in Washington today driving everything, and I don't think people see it, is uh, bath salts. Is that a lot of these corporate PACs have withheld donations from Republicans. Ah, oh, what? Say it isn't so. These corporate PACs are now withholding money? What? From Republicans? How dare they? I was recently on a conference call with our Republican conference, and here was uh -huh. the message we got. Well, don't worry. They'll come to their senses. They'll come back to us. And it just sounded like a like battered spouse syndrome. That like, you know, well, maybe if we just battered south syndrome uh, it just sounded like that love the packs more it's probably our fault though you know what we should have said if the democrats want to be the party of big corporations and big packs let them have them you know we we should be able to go yeah yeah try that go to the people to fund our campaigns we should not be yeah you should be able to you should go door to door bleeding people dry to try and get them to back tax cuts that benefit the one percent yeah try that D say that door to door in wyoming and see how that works out you're reliant on this and you know what if you break free of the chains of like these these uh, uh lobbyists and and like kind of Oh no, Matt Getz is a slave to lobbying. Break the chains of of being a slave. The way they control this place. I love slavery analogies from dudes who have, like, from sw the sweater vest brigade. You actually don't need as much money to win campaigns because the people believe in you. That's yeah, tell, tell that to everybody. You mean how Biden won? Because that's how Biden won. Biden was was outraised by everybody. He was getting trounced. He won on rep. That's what Donald Trump proved in his movement. And I think, what are you talking about? Proved in his movement. We've got it. We he got a he got a twenty eight what a twenty six million dollar check three weeks ahead of the election from Sheldon Adelson rest in peace we've got to ensure that we don't lose that but i mean each and every day the establishment's coming for us and yeah and, okay you know two, th two, th two th things yeah, yeah, yeah go go just on top of that also give yeah so let me ask you a question um when i and let me talk about american politics as if i actually give a shit but um let me tell you um right. gives you the opportunity to be the party of great reform right why true spread party. Yeah, that's what it is. You know, finally, finally, get your health care passed. Get your special plans, you know, get... I mean, isn't it always infrastructure week in the Republican Party? It's about time to do the big things, baby. Reform, yeah. To, to, to the whole, you know, funding system, to how much corporates are involved, everything. But there, there were two... But
Yeah, that's what it is. Finally, you know, it's finally the, the Republican Party can finally attack the lobbyists and corporate interests the way they've always wanted to. Get the fuck out of here. Let's, let's talk about the reality. There were two pins. Yeah, let's talk about, I'll talk about reality. The reality is, is that, you know, corporations, you know, we can't be the party of big corporation tax cuts anymore. <laughs> pincer moves put on you, right? Because that was a global. Yeah, it's a, it's a pincer move. Somebody just watched Tenet, can you tell? Global event for the populist movement globally. For you to go there is the firebrand. And when he means globally, he means working with the Falun Gong Network and, and uh, siding with far-right groups in Germany. He's been doing a bunch of that. There you go. Okay, and to take on the Cheneys. Two things happen simultaneously. In Politico, that, that next morning, it talked about all the uh, lobbyists having the event for Liz Cheney, mm -hmm. right? That answers the question. The corporate PAC's going to give us to us, Liz Cheney's our girl. Remember, it was like 10, National Pulse highlight, Politico had it in, in the morning, in the morning uh -huh. uh, column, you know, that sets the day. Also, yeah. the president of the former president of the United States, George Bush, came out and specifically hugged, you know, g gave, a, gave a digital hug to, uh, to Cheney, the father, uh -huh. to basically say, we're on, your, we're on your side. We support you. Don't worry about Gates and these guys. These are well, yeah. Of course they are. They, that was his running mate. What are you talking about? Bad guys. Well, they think that's good for them. I mean, think. Thanks for buying the shirt. Think about it. In in the time that Liz Cheney has had to respond to to respond to these critiques, she's gotten the endorsement of George W. Bush, Mitch McConnell, John Boehner, and the lobbyist and PAC community. Right. And and instead, what we had was the large. Please turn on them. Good luck. Just political rally in Wyoming that did not include a road. This is this is the bragging point. The largest political gathering in Wyoming's history that did not involve a rodeo. So let me guess. Liz Cheney shows up at rodeos. Is this what we're doing? I don't give a shit about Wyoming politics. Uh, I mean, there's, there's a lot of things to like about the state. I don't have a problem with it. I'd love to visit it one day. I haven't spent any time there of meaning. I've driven through it once. But are, are we kidding ourselves? There's half a million people in the whole goddamn state. Rodeo element. And so, I mean, I, I, I think... That a rodeo element. That sounds really Western. A, a rodeo element. It's got hints. I like this. It's got nice stems and hints of rodeo. McConnell, John Boehner, and the lobbyist and PAC community. Right. And, and instead, what we had was the largest political rally in Wyoming that did not include a rodeo element. And so, I mean, I... A rodeo element. Ew. Ew. Ew, pardon me, Mater. A rodeo element it doesn't involve. Hmm? Well, my goodness. If this one involves a, a rodeo element, I'll have to wear my nice of my dress boots, shall we? There's going to be a rodeo element. My God, we have to watch out for cow pats. I, I think that uh, this is a sharp contrast. This is drawing into, I think, a very, a very bright imagery, the questions that we have to answer as Republicans and as people. Why would you think that? Why? This is fucking dumb. You're literally just bent. You're just running interference for Trump. That's it. That is 100% all of this. Hints of rodeo. Hmm. On the political right in this country. And we are not going to just win this by kind of talking about it. Steve, we have to. You're, you're actually not going to win this. <laughs> I got news for you. You're not. They're, they're, you're going to lose. Organize around these ideas, around better candidates. And uh, my concern is that there are no better candidates. This is a good look. Is that though today we have the votes to remove Liz Cheney, that somehow the establishment's going to find a way to, you know, kick the question, avoid a vote, and... Um, what do you mean that, by that? Tell our audience what you mean by that. Well, You've well, got look, the I mean, vote. Yeah, tell, tell them what you mean by kick the question and avoid a vote. You mean they're going to avoid a vote and wait too long to where the smoke dies, or they're actually going to have the, you know, the... After, after the smoke clears, nobody's going to give a crap anymore. Oh, thank you, Melissa. 
the you got, you've got the votes to remove her right now, right? Yeah, but you and I both know that, that like the establishment can win with less votes, right? Because they are masters of the process. They, they're Yes. T tell the story. Oh, nice. Established for a reason, and they're good at it. You know, I mean, like the, the they're so good at it. It's almost like they've worked hard to create an establishment and they know how it works. Chapter in my book. I, I like the idea of doing a raffle. I do them so infrequently that I forget how to do them. So I'll have to look it up again. It's on the Streamlabs page, though, I think. Let me do that. I will. Here, hold on. Before I even start any further down this road. These guys, I swear to God. I wrote about it as two parties, one scam. Because this is not a town where it is like red team versus blue team. Tell them, man. Tell them. Go for it. Yeah. Anymore. Uh, and, you know, you guys. Oh, my gosh. Chili Crew. He's dropped this at comedy clubs in LA, which I obviously can't do right now. Here you are keeping you. Oh, thank you so much. That's amazing. Bless you. Thanks so much for the super chat, Chili Crew. Uh, Matt is talking like the TYT guys. I know. That's why I'm for it. Because the TYT guys are always about destroying the Democratic Party, which, of course, they don't consider themselves members of. So why would they give a shit if it, li it lives or dies? Because all the system failing is actually the goal. And the same thing is true of Matt Getz. They are the same frigging people. The, the whole thing is the system's got to be destroyed and whoever dies in the process, that's just, you know, collateral damage. It's, you know, it's, it's political strafe bombing. And, and I, as much as I attack it when people on the left try to do it, um, for the very same reason I support people on the right for doing it. See it every yes, day. Jamie. What about uh, in this, what are you going to try to, how are you going to be a part of what happens at four o'clock? Are you going to walk people through what actually happens? Do you have a speaking? Yeah, tell us how it works. So are you going to have a photo shoot? Dispatches from the front lines of the MAGA revolution. <laughs> the Capitol's right out the window. I'm on the front lines. The front lines are apparently in a hotel room in, I guess, blocks from, or did he go, I'm in the White House. Take a picture. Um, so the front lines are in a, a place with really nice linen curtains. I mean, look at that. What, what kind of a hotel are you in that has the velvet curtains with a, with a linen patterned inside on it? These are blackout curtains. These are, these are expensive. The front lines are cush as hell. Roll, how, does this, how does McCarthy play this? Because quite frankly, McCarthy... Yeah. The Machiavellian, look, he's, he's the pledge chairman, like in your... What? M Hold on. McCarthy's Machiavellian? Eternity. But the Thank Machiavellian you. side of him says a wounded Liz Cheney is better than a Stefanik who's on the rise and who's associated with Matt Gates. right? The last thing I want is a Matt Gates. You know, I got Jordan. It's bad enough. I don't want a Stefanik or Lee Zeldin or somebody who's associated with these crazy Trump MAGA people, America first. They may not be... No, uh, that's not the concern. It should be, but that's not the concern. Their concern is straight up QAnon, murderers, people who sided with the insurrectionists. And, and what Matt Getz is trying to be is Q light. He's trying to be a, a Q delivery system for these jagoffs. Hold on, Linda. Let me try to do this real quick. Okay. Um, hold on. I've got to do something real quick. Why is that? Okay. This is starting. It's, ooh, my, why is my, that's funny. Hmm. Okay. Now it's back. Okay. My page was frozen on the other, on the other thing. There we go. So, um, yeah, tell she us how you're going to do She it. may not be a populist, but she, she's close enough and she's not a wounded Liz Cheney. How does McCarthy try to break your, break your grip? I don't think there's any love lost between Kevin McCarthy and Liz Cheney, but if you're in leadership. Love Lost is one of my favorite Dick Cheney, Kevin McCarthy uh, romance novels, by the way. I just went for the record. The most dangerous thought is that you could ever be dislodged from leadership 
or that anyone could be dislodged from leadership. So even though I think that within the... That's, that's the most dangerous thought? Isn't that something that people in power deal with all the time, that that's the... That's what you actually have to work. Republican around. leadership, there's a healthy amount of resentment toward Liz Cheney. The strongest impulse they have is to stop the notion that anybody could be removed because they no longer have the consent of the governor. Removed. <laughs> they no longer have the consent of the governor governed. You live in Florida. You flew there to to Wyoming to take a shit on her. You're not from there. You're a carpetbagger flying in from a much higher populous state with a lot more industry to tell them how to do their business. What are you talking about? You didn't even ride a bull while you were there. This is, this is embarrassing. She's not just in leadership. She's head of the Republican conference. How could, I mean, this is like in British but it's like a joke. It's a joke. Right? The Republican conference is a, a joke. joke. Guys, if it's everybody a knows that we... The Republican conference is a joke, okay? It's a joke. Guys, it's a joke. We have no power in this town. We can't impact legislation. We can't impact the executive agencies of government. All we have is messaging. And so if like Why the leading person carrying the message, everyone in America knows is less popular with Republicans than Muammar Gaddafi was with Libyans, you know, at the, at the day of his removal, you know, I think that it, it starts to just become like a- Whoa, that was no good. Chrome died. Sorry, guys. My system ran out of memory. Hold on one second. Let me fix stuff real quick, if I may. Hold on. Fixing me. That was That's a first. I have so much stuff open. Oh, I know why. Because I was still working with... Uh, yeah. I still had Zoom open from working with John earlier. So give me one second, and I'll bring my stuff back up. You guys didn't need to see that, uh, like, extra crizzo that I had going on. Force that quit. Yes, go away. Discord takes up a lot, but it's not anywhere near some of these other pieces or whatever. Um, give me one second. I'll be right back. I'm going to reload those pages. Talk amongst yourselves. Well, the virus. Sorry about that, guys. Uh, I I was helping uh, John um, earlier, and I didn't shut the other software, so it walked me into a corner, memory-wise. That's fun. Like, I, I think thing. Rand Paul did a great job smoking out the Senate, but like, th there is. Yeah, he was smoking something smoking out the Senate. No chance of a conviction because of those 45 votes deeming this an unconstitutional exercise. And so let's... They didn't deem it an unconstitutional exercise. They did not deem it unconstitutional. I mean, granted, you're an idiot, but it did not... Oh, sorry, I didn't put it up on page. Boink. Granted, <clears throat> you're an idiot, but uh, it did not deem this an unconstitutional exercise. 
it just because you think something is something doesn't make it something. You understand? You you do not get to assign definitions to things based on your wants in the circumstance. Uh, magical thinker. Let's go out there and put up a an affirmative defense on this election activity that was inappropriate and on just the the entire stop uh, this 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 what this election activity that was inappropriate all right mm -hmm. that's the most brilliant thing that's been said we yes thank you again chili crew we have a free option here Rand paul by that move brilliant brilliant he's like those 45 can't yeah it was amazing they can't do anything now they have to now act like they're insane all right so there's a there is now a uh, raffle going on. I think it might have already started in the Twitch. Did it show up? Yeah, there you go. Um, um, let's see. Cosmic. Thank you, Cosmic Rose, for that ad that you're putting up in there. I appreciate that as well. But I'm pretty sure, let's see, um, that people, all you have to do is put in like slash raffle or something along those lines. Now, let's see. Um, but it is currently running. Giveaway, live action. It should be working. If it doesn't show up, let me know in a second. It's running for a half hour. There you go. Yeah, so it's starting to work. Cool. Excellent. Yeah, so it's exclamation point raffle if you're in the Twitch stream to try and win a shirt. And it's it's running right now. And make sure that in your account, it, you know, afterwards that you have your, inform, your uh, information in there. So if you ordered something, it would come to you, that kind of thing, because that's, that's been a rubbing point in the past. Reverse it. There, there cannot be a conviction. This is the first time it's been, this is exactly right. We have a free. Yeah, but that doesn't mean there shouldn't be one. Free option, what you call finance. You have a free option. It is impossible for those senators to go, you agree. Totally. Can so I let's not play to the Senate. Let's play. No. No, it isn't impossible. Because it clearly is constitutional because it's going forward. They, they, can, they can absolutely be moved by the evidence. Play to the country. Let's play to our people. Let's give them something to be excited about. Now, early on, yeah. first of all, let's give them some to be excited about. The president yeah. knows that his best love. defenders are, you know, at, at the risk of being immodest, are Jim Jordan, myself, Andy Biggs, Lee Zeldin, yes. Elise. Lunatics, right. Louis Gohmert, um, uh, and of course, let's not forget the people who beat Officer Sicknick to, to death. Stephonic, yes. The, the the A team that defended him in the yes. last impeachment. Yes. The A team. Yes. And there were the A team that defended him in the sorry, the A team. The A team that defended him. You're in the house. The impeachment passed the house. The Senate just stopped it. It wasn't because they were convinced. It's because he's in their party. What A team are you talking about? The fix is in. Oh my God, it's like a rich kid paying, like, having his dad pay Mike Tyson to throw a fight and then calling himself the greatest boxer in the world. Some among us who checked to see whether we could be the ones to go defend him in the Senate because we would be honored to. And the word... Oh, would we? ...we got back from House Ethics is that we could not, as sitting members of the You've House... You've already run that by him. ...go, go and defend... Right, because you already lost in the House. You can't go and lose in the Senate. The argument would be, you know, in, for the best interests of the accused, you don't want to have the people who screwed the pooch in the House to go over to the Senate and screw the pooch too. Defend him in the Senate. Okay, so you, you know this better, and your theory of my, this is exactly mine. Go to the low-hanging fruit. Would you... Gee, gee, Steve, really? Really? Your theory is go to the low-hanging fruit. I would have never called that. I, I, that's amazing to me that you would even consider such a thing. That you, that you, sir, would go with the low-hanging fruit. Then step down from Congress. Would you resign in order to defend the president on the way that you want to defend him? I love my district. I love representing them. But right. I view this cancellation of the Trump presidency and the Trump movement as one of the major risks to my people, both in my district and all throughout my people of this great country. Absolutely. If the president called me and wanted me to go defend him on the floor of the Senate, that would Please be the top him. priority in my Donald Trump. I know you don't listen to me.
please just this once, please call him. Please call him and ask him to represent you in the trial. Please, please, please. And I'm not just saying this because he won't be in the house anymore. I'm also saying it because he will do a terrible job for you. So please. And by the way, look what this asshole is arguing. You want to talk about participation ribbons? You want to talk about privilege and, and, uh, and special snowflakes? This asshole wants to go defend Trump in the Senate because he knows the fix is in. He thinks he can't lose. All he has to do is squawk in, say, two sentences. We believe this to be unconstitutional and 45 members will do it. And you need 60, uh, you know, so you're not going to get them. And so let's go home. And I won and I defended MAGA against the, the evil left. That's what he thinks he's going to do. This is so pathetic. Everybody's brave when the fix is in. Damn. My life. I would leave my house seat. I would leave my home. I would do anything I had to do. Would you? Yes. You'd, you'd leave your house seat. Um, you'd leave your home. But would you move into a guest house on, in Mar-a-Lago with only Ivanka to keep you company and, and Eric bringing you uh, glasses of iced tea and, and, and helping you sort your papers and setting up a, uh, a big bulletin board. Oh, thank you. Thanks, Mark. I appreciate that. I got to move this so that people can see it. Because this is, yeah, there you go. But I need to be able to see it. I need the bigger text. I got to work on that too. To ensure that the greatest president in my lifetime, one of the greatest presidents our country has ever had, maybe the greatest president. In, in, in your, maybe the greatest president. This, again, audience of one. President our country has ever had got a full. Fuck me. Like, Jesus Christ. How are you not embarrassed to even say that? I mean, in spite of the fact that there have been tons of other Republicans they could be proud of. Fr friggin' Lincoln, for God's sake, man. What are you talking about? What did he face that he didn't mess up? His only test was the pandemic. Everything else was greased on day one. What major crisis did he suddenly fix? This is embarrassing. Throated defense that wasn't crouched. So something about being crouched and giving him a full-throated defense. Down that wasn't in fear of losing some moderate Republican senator, but that was worthy of the fight that he gave to the great people of this country for four years. Yeah, worthy of the great fight. So I see. So you're going to give him a fight. You're going to fight for him the way he fought for the American people. So you're going to spend, what, 60% of your time uh, working on the case that you're doing, your billable hours golfing? Cool. The people of, I think, of your district would overwhelmingly support you if you said, I'm going your, the people of your district would totally support you in not being their congressperson anymore. <laughs> I'm going to step down to go defend the president against the stealing of this election. They would definitely support you in stepping down. I don't know that that's the compliment you think it should be, Steve. I don't think there's any question. Here's the question. No, there's no question. But what is the question, Steve? Um, and please don't go with... Um, shower or shave it's both given you have navarro and matt brainerd all this data all this information out there would matt gates if you step down tomorrow morning do you have enough please don't threaten me with a good time steve Bannon. enough time to rework this and to file those briefs because you got to put the pretrial briefs in next uh wednesday i think you guys are tuesday for the prosecution wednesday for the defense and or monday for the prosecution tuesday for the defense and the so what, yeah, whenever, just eventually. You start right? Tuesday afternoon. Do you have the time to mount the 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 offense that you think needs to happen? Well, I, I'm not one to turn can in you, assignments late. Yeah. Matt, can you be a, as offensive as we need you to be? But I do not believe this is a case that's going to be won on the briefs. I think that this is a case that we... I think this is a case that is already won... So if I just go in there, I'm just going to win just because the others, you know, our team has already decided to wreck the whole thing. You have to make to the American people that if there are not. Why? Why? Why do you have to make the case to the American people? I mean, other than you think this is just a PR stunt. Not fundamental changes to the way that we manage elections. We cannot have 
the confidence in the, this, this democracy that the people deserve, confidence in our republic. And uh, if, if we don't do that, then we're just the surrender caucus. We're the surrender movement. I'm here to win. Win so much I get tired of it because that's what I was promised. You absolutely. You look like you're tired of winning. You know who also looks like they're tired of winning? The person who has to clean up the, uh, the snack area of the pandemic war room. Honest to God, it looks like you're trying to create a secondary contagion back there. I'm not one to room raid people, but at least I have the sense to put up a green screen. You understand? I understand when I have a workspace that, uh, that requires me to have stuff out all the time that I can actually... See, I got stuff going on back here that I'm working on. People don't need to stare at that shit. That's why I have this. Dummy. <laughs> Straighten your shit out. I just want to make sure we're clear about this. You think it's important enough. They're, they're not. You're not. He's not. You're not. This is all just, you're just arguing about bumper stickers. Enough for the future of this movement and this republic and the constitution of the American people. That President Trump actually has an obligation that has to argue what went on with the irregularities in this thing. And it has to be done on the well. And it has to be done in the well of the Senate. So he must take, he must call for more people to gather outside the Capitol again during the impeachment. Start sending out letters, raising funds for his defense and saying, be there at the Capitol, show up for this. And Trump's going to testify himself and I'll be there with you. Well, the Senate next week. Yes. Well, is that I, I do. And I mean, yeah. I have to disagree with my friend Sean Hannity on that because Sean would say, this is so ludicrous. We should just not no. even show up. Wrong. Uh, I yeah. think this is a platform to keep fighting and we only get what we fight for in this movement and we need to do it with an aggressive. Yeah. And what did Matt, what has Matt Getz fought for so far? A uh, man who brags about grabbing women by the genitals without asking them for their permission and um, who's willing to step down as a public servant to go be a lap dog for the guy who grabs women's genitals without asking. You know, family values. Defense of the president. And in that aggressive defense, you are prepared to tell your district that, hey, for the good of this nation, the good of this presidency, I am prepared to step down and go, if I have to, if Ethics says that, and go represent him in the well of the Senate next week. If that's what it came to, I would do it. And Matt Gates, you think as a trial lawyer, you think you have enough time with data out there, information, whether it's Navarre, Brainerd, whoever. He's not making the case. Phil God, Klein, God. you have enough ability God, to pull okay. that together to mount a real defense next week. I've never lost a case at trial. And uh, I can't imagine the floor of the Senate would be the first place I would lose. And, as importantly, structurally, which nobody's ever said, that what Rand Paul Nobody. brilliantly did last week is set a floor. We have a free option. Do you agree with that? Yes. I mean, no, that's dumb. He, he, what he's saying is it's already fixed. The fix is already in. This is, this is like an offensive play where the other team has already jumped off sides. You have a free shot. So, you know, uh, don't go small. Don't lay up. Go big. So, so people that are telling the president, if the phrase election fraud crosses your lips or anybody on your side, you will automatically be found guilty. You will be, you will be found guilty, and, the, and they will strip away your ability to run again in 2024. That is not accurate, according to Matt Gates. Th that's nonsense by virtue of the brilliant tactics of Rand Paul. Give me, okay, Brilliant. before we wrap up, the two or three things you would focus, if you were actually in the well of the Senate next week. Yeah, what are you going to say? What's, give everybody a preview. The president says, hey, I love it. I love Gates. He's my guy. Bang. Got the other lawyer's going to do the other stuff. I want Gates to do this. Walk us through the two or three things. You, first off, do you bring Trump as a, not a witness, do you include him as an advocate because he can sell it best? Or, and tell us the two or three things. Yeah, please. He can totally sell it best. Did you do the open the case? Uh, um, I, I did. I, I, I bounced him. Uh, I, I didn't make, uh, let's see. Yeah, I, I can't go back. Um, is that the wrong one? Uh, is it one that I missed? Because I thought I got the one. Man, Facebook's, they're, I'm telling you, they're, they're, Losing their grip again. Hold on. I'm going brooming. Man. I would make sure that, uh, that, that we painted a clear picture of the legitimacy of the president's concerns uh, and, 
I, that would be my leadoff. What concerns are those that you should that just for men is is a great value for money, even when you're a billionaire, and that anybody has the right to be completely orange without ever doing the makeup on their ears or the back of their neck. Um, that that it's a fitter. Uh, I probably that being a being a circus peanut in in a clown suit is a great look. Probably wouldn't, I probably wouldn't uh, lay out my entire strategy on the on the right. war room before. Because he doesn't have one? That's, that's, that's why, by the way. Or, but my leadoff hitter would definitely be that the president was making legitimate okay, claims thank you, Judy. about an election that, uh, that was devastating in terms of its impact on our trust and our would, confidence would, in the republic. Would there be any ability after you finished, in your mind, having never lost a case, that the New York Times, the paper of record of our beloved republic, with five Pulitzer Prize winners up here on this thing, that the New York Times and CNN and the Washington Post would never be able to say again, this was baseless and there was no evidence? Mr. Matt Gates. Uh, among the people that I talked to outside of the Beltway, uh, you mean idiots? We have Washington outside the press corps. There are intense concerns that are valid and appropriate, and I think we could showcase them. That's a, I, I don't give a shit what your concerns are. I'm dead serious. If you don't have a reason for those concerns, if those concerns are not reasonable because you have evidence to prove that those are legitimate concerns, why the hell should I give a shit? That isn't, again, this is all, this is why this is all PR. He wants to drop his seat and go defend Trump because he knows the fix is in and he's already going to win. And all they're going to do is voice, there's lots of people who have concerns. Yeah, there's a lot of flat earthers out there too. But I'm, I, I'm not interested in arguments on the Senate floor about why one of them should be transportation secretary. Effectively. And you believe, having been a trial lawyer, that there's enough of the 3,000 affidavits you yeah, it's got a long history as a trial lawyer. You believe you have enough evidence. Oh, look, to we looked at this in the House impeachment. I mean, th there there is so much evidence of stuff that is unexplainable. There's so much evidence of stuff that is unexplainable. Well, and by the way, courts didn't look at a lot of this. Everyone wants to be like, oh, Trump can't. Yeah, they did. And I looked at it. It's bullshit. If they lost in court, that's nonsense. We lost on the sufficient. No, no, you didn't lose because of standing in every court. And a lot of lawyers, they refused uh, to offer their evidence up to the court itself. And they're like, give us an evidentiary hearing after you've already said there's legitimacy to the case. And the judges said, no, you either present some evidence that you have a legitimate charge because it's extraordinary. You have to show me there's a reason why I might make a filing that causes an injunction that invalidates the votes of a bunch of people who legitimately voted. You got to pony up first. We don't want to pony up first. We want you to say you're doing an investigation and for the next five days, we'll do a big press push that we're going to do an evidentiary hearing. And then if you throw out our evidence because it's bullshit, then we can claim that we were disenfranchised somehow. It's the same story as the, the Hil they wanted the Hillary Clinton email story in 25 different places. They wanted the, um, the, the Hunter Biden laptop in 25 different places. This is garbage of pleadings and standing not on whether or not the weight of the evidence was sufficient to show fraud bullshit and i think sufficient fraud to definitely impact the outcome in several of these states um that's because you lost you don't actually believe that and if you do you're dumb but i don't think you actually do what will you do to try to make this happen well i'm here with you steve okay, that's how I, that's what i do to try try to make <laughs> okay, everything that's happen. how all things happen okay that's how all things happen. Oh, you come here to Steve and Trump listens to Steve. And if I'm sitting here saying I'll represent you and I'll step down to do it, I don't really need to know. You know, I, I mean, it's amazing. Good. Um, I want to say something that this is a I think a seminal moment in this entire thing. I believe that Great. you need to talk to the president of the United States, the 45th president of the United States uh, th that just ended his first term a couple of weeks ago immediately. I think this is very important. The key point. Here yeah, go talk. Go t go talk to him. Steve, set it up, man. Yeah, you guys go hang out. It's going to be awesome. Please step down from your house seat, Matt Getz. Here is the people, and I love Sean Hannity. He's a great guy. You're giving, you don't understand enough of what happened. Matt Gates, we have a free option. It is. Yeah, I mean, you can look at, look at Steve Bannon. 
and know that you never pass up an opportunity to put your best face forward in any circumstance. If you have a chance to get your message out to the public, you jump on it, whether you bathed or not. It's impossible for those senators to reverse their, their vote. That's the brains of it. No, it isn't. No, it isn't. They can go, my feeling was is that it was unconstitutional. But now, after I've seen the case, and they understand that, the, that you know, they have made the case in the impeachment hearing that um, it is constitutional and there was all sorts of evidence entered in that, that that single get it dismissed thing was not enough to taint the entire jury. And I've rethought my vote now that I've seen more evidence. I was presented with more evidence that I had going in. How hard is that? This Mad Gates, go with God. It, it, this is what a fourth turning is about. People you've never heard of before. Is that what his second? That's what is the fourth turning. Come up and be real heroes, real leaders. You're a leader. You're a hero. You're a patriot. Uh, people got to. Based on what? Why is he a hero? I mean, I, he's obviously not a patriot. He's a sycophant who supports Donald Trump over the Constitution. But what makes him a hero? What's the hero part? He's willing to step down from his seat to defend Trump. What was he afraid of losing the seat? He was willing to give up to go defend Trump? What are you talking about? Buy book and they got to go to your to, to your site. What's your MattGates.com. Yeah, Come help me out. Okay. Come help me out. That's his next book. Come help me out. Um, that's exactly what I said when um, I called my dad from the drunk tank. Good Lord, we're already over time. And because of that little bump and ruffle, I lost pieces of my video. Hold on, let me try and I, I have one more that I wanted to do. And then I promise uh, I'll li let you guys go for the Wednesday night. And I appreciate you hanging out with me for the hump day. And we're almost to, did we get to the end of it already? Um, let's see. We've still got uh, 20 minutes left in the thing. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to end the, the raffle in five minutes. Yeah, it'll end in five minutes. So there you go. Um, if you're on Twitch and you want to take part in the raffle, jump in there. If not, you're cool, and then it'll be up in five minutes. We'll have a winner in five minutes, um, well, which should give me just enough time to go seek out some uh, th some of the pieces that I you know lost earlier. Um, over the course of the next you know week, we're, it's really going to lead up to the impeachment, and there'll be a bunch of news about whether or not. Uh, um, you know, Trump wants to hold on rank. Let me t hold on pausing. Tell no, you uh, about. No, let's not tell you. Be quiet. Um, that we're going to see over the course of the next week, a lot of um, will Trump testify? Is he going to do it? Will he do Does he even need to? Will he act in his own behalf? Will he advocate for it? Will we hear him for the first time? Will he be making public statements? Blah, 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 blah. No, my, my guess is he's going to do most of this stuff. He's not coming to D.C. He's going to hide in Mar-a-Lago. And stay there, and I and that will that will keep up. And you have to, oh Shazy, you have to do a, an excl exclamation point and raffle, not an, a lowercase i. To just say there you go. So, um, and it only works in the Twitch stream, by the way. That's Coca Cola, Coca Cola is by far my what? favorite soda. I mean, there is really, really. Hold on. Oh, sorry, I didn't bring up the page. Sorry, this man wants you to know that Coca-Cola is by far his favorite soda. And, and judging from his bloat, this man is a, a person who drinks a lot of soda. A lot of soda. Lots of soda. I mean, an overwhelming amount of soda. Nothing, in my mind, and there is nothing that comes close. I know a lot of people are Pepsi, blah, 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 but I am a diehard. Yeah, yeah. No, some people like Pepsi and blah, blah, blah. Coca-Cola. If there is Pepsi in the refrigerator, which there never is, but if there was Pepsi in the refrigerator, I'm the kind of guy that even no matter how thirsty I was, I would have water over Pepsi. I just... What? Water over Pepsi? Okay, that's it. I'm, I'm convinced that uh, Glenn Beck is a, a, a mole of some sort. He's got to be you know, a Russian or an alien wearing a skin. Water? Who drinks water? What the hell? Water over Pepsi, no matter how thirsty you were? 
just hate it. Okay? He just... Can you imagine... Okay. I don't care. I don't really drink soda. But can you imagine hating Pepsi over Coke to a, a, a point where it actually motivates a variation in behavior that strongly? No. And by the way, Glenn is not Glenn is not rosy and his hair has powder in it, but that's another thing entirely. The reason he is this color is because it's, he has some black lights in the studio and doesn't recognize that it makes you look all orangey or like rosy, kind of purplish pink. No longer, no longer will there be any Coca-Cola product in my house. Coca-Cola. Oh my God. Shit just got real. Coca-Cola sent out notices to law firms demanding that the company will require diversity among law firms who bill it for work in the United States and reduce payments if they don't comply. Now here's okay. Here's the problem. This is the uh, the problem is a private company has decided that they are motivated by the importance of diversity. They think there's a lack of like accounting firms are not hiring black accountants or uh, I guess a, even redneck account, I don't know, Hispanic accountants who are qualified um, for some reason. It's, it's all Jewish people and Asians. Is that what we're supposed to think? Is that, what you're, is that where you're going, Glenn? And now that they've tried to open that up, I mean, I understand you supported Donald Trump unequivocally, and you, you know, you're one of his favorite fart sniffers, but you, uh, you do know, and, and, I, and that does make sense, considering that you actually, uh, you, you're aware, you have to be aware, that Trump went to his own accounting firm and saw black people and said he didn't want them counting his money, he wanted the people with the small hats. I'm sure you fall into that category and you believe the exact same thing. So diversity is a bad word to you anyways. I prefer the word variety myself. But please continue. It is much more aggressive than anything that the government can even do. Right? Yeah, the government has, you know, rules about that. I, Huh? Okay, it's a private company. They can do what they want. If you have a... Okay, hey, thanks. End the video right there. Thanks, Glenn. Bye. Like, how many... Who had Republicans attacking private companies for doing stuff that ingratiates themselves with a broader public? Hmm? By the way, uh, you, you want to know my feelings about Coke? Go look up uh, Coke. Go search Coke. India and water all in the same thing. I give a shit. The problem with diversity, what you have to do is you call the EEOC. If they are discriminating against you, then you call the EEOC. But see... But they're not discriminating against Coke. Coke is saying that they are prioritizing diverse accounting firms over ones that don't you know, that seem to avoid it. They can't have a case. They can't go to the EEOC because they're not the ones being discriminated against. They believe discrimination is happening, but they have no, wait for it, standing to bring a case against them the way individuals do. And a lot of times, these giant companies, that the kind that's, that do accounting for huge companies like Coke, they have lawyers out the ass. Nobody could sue for discrimination and win. So Coke is saying, look, we're going to take a look at, it, at your diversity policy. If you can't help it, you can't help it. But we're going to hope that you open your diversity up. Your diversity up. Thank you, Thomas. That's not what they're looking for now at Coca-Cola. No. Coca-Cola has their chief diversity equity. Very important word. Equity is not the same. Is what? Same as equality. Equality right. means we all have an equal chance. No, it doesn't. Equity means we all have an equal chance. Equality means we all have the same outcome. That's why it's a very important word distinction that the Biden administration has used. You can't guarantee that people are going to be winners, but you can guarantee that everybody stands at the starting line equal to everybody else. That's where equity comes in. Damn it. Equity means we all get the same outcome. 
No, it doesn't. It means the exact opposite, and he knows this. So their diversity, equality, and inclusion officer uh, said that... So if equity means we all end up the same, why are they using the word equality then when you have a problem with what they're doing? If you have a problem with their, what they're doing and the word they use is equality, then you would argue that the word associates with the problem that you have. They don't have an equity officer, dumbass. At uh, their general counsel is urging law firms to effect real systematic change. Urging? Oh my God. When did the urging start? This is not about the company. This is about systematic change. By it- Right. They spend a lot of money. Why would they spend their money on, on firms that actively work against diversity? When there are diverse, uh, there are a lot of people available to do that work and they could give their money to ones that are obviously open to the most qualified people as opposed to people based largely on skin color. Why as a business would you want to go with the company that um, only hires these people so you get what you pay for from that one thing or goes, we don't care what color people are, we hire the best people and we make an active choice to look for people who are qualified, who may be outside the normal you know, range of what these other companies look for based on race and those limitations. But tell me again about equality and equity and how you just screwed your own argument about that, but that's all Glenn does. Hearing to new requirements that mandate all outside counsel allocate a portion of their work to diverse attorneys, especially black lawyers, or risk losing money or even future legal business from Coca-Cola. Okay. And? I'm sorry, are you making the case that these black lawyers are unqualified? Or that there are too many of them working? Do, does, does Coke have the right to choose where they spend their money and why? Do they have, a, 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 as since com- corporations are people, my dear Glenn, um, do they have the ability to vote with their dollar? You dickhead. Hola. It's going to require a quarterly reporting about the makeup of legal teams that do work for it and Mm self-identify as American Indian, Alaskan Native, Asian, Black, women, Hispanic, LGBTQ, Native Hawaiian, Pacific Islander, or persons with disabilities. For those working on new matters for Coke, at least... New matters, at least what? 30% of each build associate and partner time must be from diverse attorneys and such amounts 30 percent dear god what how are how are the whites only law firms going to make it by with only 70 percent of coca-cola's business at least half will be from black attorneys Now, this is just what this one company is saying you have to do if you're going to get to get their business. Going to represent us as an attorney firm. Right. If you're going to (laughs) wait for the word represent us. But this is just the beginning of it. Oh, it's all coming. Next thing you know, it'll be 30% whites only and a guarantee of 30% of business will go to whites only firms and 70% will be spread out over everyone else plus them mixed together. So a 50-50 firm will still have 50% white attorneys. They'll get 70% of the business and the whites only firms will only get 30. It's, it's, It's a slippery slope. Now, what will these firms do? I don't know. Uh, Hire more black people, Hispanic people, people with disabilities, um, LGBTQ people, or what the horrible thing would be is they force their LGBTQ uh, lawyers to come out of the closet so that they have to, you know, and lest they lose their job to keep work for the company because there's plenty of gay lawyers who may not be out So, is that what you're hoping for, Glenn? These firms can't cry discrimination, can they? No, they can't. 
first of all, if they do, they're racist. Everyone will label them racist. Um, well, they, they would have to be racist to, to give a shit or just go, we only have five people. We've, we don't, we're not a big firm. We don't need to hire more people and we're not going to fire somebody to bring somebody on and Coke will go, okay, well, you're part of the 70% that doesn't have to do anything. Now, but we're, but we're a giant company and we're all white. There's 900 lawyers working for this corporation. And, uh, if we let one black person in, then where there goes the neighborhood. If they say that, yeah, that's exactly the response they're going to get, you dickhead. What happens when that firm does this? Uh-oh. What? They just make it stronger because they will then also say, and we're going to be doing work with firms that believe that. If Oh, my God. If you hire a black person or a, or a lawyer who's in a wheelchair, whoever heard of that in a TV show... Um, or a gay lawyer, or don't get me started on a bisexual lawyer who's Hispanic. You, I mean, if you hire one person who's just all the things, does that get you back? Do you, you're, oh, suddenly you're in the 70%? Sure, yeah, that qualifies. You actively sought one out. Good for you. You found the one. Congratulations. So, but that's Glenn's argument. If one gets in, then it's a slippery slope. Then they're all going to start hiring black people. And then where will we be? If... Let's say the Coca-Cola bottling, uh, the local bottling plant might be. Oh, my God. The bottling plant will have to hire, I don't know, fewer Hispanic people. He owned locally. Are they having to do the same kind of board of directors? Are they going to have the same requirements, the same things on climate change that Coca-Cola has? How did we get from, from an all-white legal team if they want to keep an account with Coke, they don't have to. They can go, all right, pass. We're not, we, can't hi- we can't afford to hire anybody. We're going to go work for Pepsi. We know that we- Glenn's a new customer. Okay, wait, hold on. Uh, picking a winner. Here we go. Deborah. Congratulations, Deborah. Uh, Deborah McDonald, 1958. You won the T-shirt. Congratulations. Right on. That I didn't even... Uh, it, that has I that's the first time it's actually shown a logo thing. Congratulations. Um wow, she says, I never win shit. Well now you have. That's great. Congratulations. Um it should take care of it. It should you should get a little notification, I think, in your email that you want it. And uh, I was afraid to even try it. Well, don't, Deborah. You did great. Um she's got there's a little chat going in there. I I didn't want to be a loser. Well, we all fall down that hole. I've yeah. So congratulations, Deborah, and um, be right back. Absolutely. Um, you'll, you'll if you have any information in there. I think you you have to do it within there. I don't control that. She's gonna prance. Nice. If you have um, uh, if you you need to, they'll send you information on how to do it. This is only my like fourth or fifth time doing this, so you'll have to forgive me if I don't know all the nuts and bolts of it. Um, one of these days, I'm gonna have to enter my own raffle while no one is streaming and give it back. To myself so that I can figure out how it works. But there you go. Um, but congrats to Deborah McDonald, 1958, for her getting the t-shirt. Fantastic. Uh, please Instagram a picture of whoever ends up wearing it. Uh, it's a wonderful thing. Because that will affect the truckers. Uh-oh. No black truckers, says Glenn Beck. This is a giant chain that one company... Can uh-huh. do an end run around the Constitution, and it's in- no, no, they can't. They're not doing an end run around the Constitution, and they're a multinational corporation, anyways. They're they're not they're not discriminating based on race. They're they're guaranteeing inclusion in a situation where they believe there to be none because you are a representative. Let, let me let me use terms that you can understand, Glenn. You have the right to hire a secretary who is a fox because you believe that a certain physical ideal represents your brand clearly 
And no one would believe for a second that you aren't just surrounded by hot ladies all the time. So because you um, have a specific brand you're trying to sell that, you know, the hot ladies love Glenn, that you can hire based on looks for a hostess or a, uh, a secretary or somebody who introduces people. If, you, if that's what you want, you can do that in America. People can say that they were discriminated against for all sorts of things, but you could go, no, this, is, this represents how our company is seen and what we're shooting for is a very specific type. You can do that because you are selling an image and that's part of you selling your image. So let's understand that Coke is not doing this because Coke has suddenly found Jesus or suddenly has given up on the fact that, you know, they were responsible for death squads in India um, over water rights. No, they're doing this because it's good PR. This is what's called as cause marketing. And Rudy is not on right now so far. This is cause marketing. This is, this is Coke showing off. And, and Glenn's giving them a layup by helping them, you know, paint this as if it's real. Impact will be amazing. Yeah, I agree. I think it's amazing that, uh, that law firms that might be 100% white might have to compete with companies that actually go out and look for people across all spe- the, the entire spectrum for qualified individuals. All right. Imagine getting the Fortune 500 companies to do this. You're no longer living in an America that you understand because you can't... I understand it. I live in America and I, I understand it. I understand what they're doing. I understand why they're doing it. I understand that they can do it. I understand it doesn't affect my behavior at all. I understand I have the right to buy or not buy their product based on that decision. I understand that Coke is not an an integral service to that. I understand that there are uh, lots of, I mean, even the individual bottling companies, if they believe that this is a form of reverse discrimination or forced uh, racial integration or some nonsense, they could always go uh, shack up with a a little IPA or some nonsense or, or start their own soda run to the government first of all the police are bad the government is bad the cops that are supposed to watch these companies are in bed with them wait a minute when did glenn beck join a cab so whatever they do is going to be fine you have no place to run what now they've got coke We have no way to escape. What the shit is this? And if you own a business, you're going to be asked to either tolerate or be put on a list. If you you aren't willing to tolerate, you kind of are on a list. (laughs) What are you talking? You're going to be put on a list. You're not going to be asked to like, you're not going to be forced to hire people if you have no room to hire someone else. And if a company was, like I said, you got 70-30 in this situation, you asshole. They're going to move 30% of their business to more diverse firms. Maybe, Glenn, I'm going to float this. Maybe at, at the current pace, uh, Coke was looking through their um, the attorneys that they use to represent them in accounting firms and the like. And they did a quarterly review. And they need to jettison a bunch of them. Not just because they don't have the work for them right now necessarily, but also because the people who run those companies are assholes. Straight up, has nothing to do with, you know, with them being directly racist. They're just terrible at their job. They're jerks. They've had, like, for whatever reason, they've had a vice grip on the company's policy from the last president, three presidents ago. And Coke has no real way to shake them loose. So a new policy would allow them to cut loose 30% of the people they have contracts with that they know are racially homogenous simply, and and they may never even get that work back if they decide. That 70% may become the 100% eventually because shit, now they've got 100% of the companies they use are racially diverse. Um, So... 
at some point, I, I'm, I'm guessing that this also serves a secondary purpose that Coke is trying to do to get rid of firms they used to work with. This is the problem with the oligarchy. The oligarchy. Coca-Cola is an oligarchy, not because it's siphoning money out of the country and, and hiding it in the Caymans. No, because... They're insisting that law firms that represent them in court when they are being sued should be racially diverse. Let me go out on a limb and say that a lot of times, Coke and companies like it that are enormous, oftentimes get sued by people who aren't white. And the reason they do is because they tend to take advantage of like water sources in, uh, you know, in impoverished countries and that kind of stuff. And they use it to make their soda and sell it all over India and China and places like that. And so they get sued by collective groups of people who aren't white. And in the process of being sued by that, they would like to have an attorney that goes uh, and fights those little battles for them that aren't white. So it doesn't look like it's just racist foreigners coming into India and parts of Africa and and attacking uh, those people, There's, they'll send in black lawyers into Africa and Indian lawyers into uh, India to deal with those law firm, those cases, so that they have, the, they can't pull those and go, hey, can you assign, um, you know, Fujibar Maharadin to handle our Indian case because we don't want to look like a giant white multinational that's stealing water from all these people. Can you do that? Can you send him in? That's why. Just this week, Project Veritas released the footage of Mark Zuckerberg and other Facebook executives complaining how they have too much power. Considering that they and their fellow big tech elites deplatformed a sitting president last month. I uh, no, he deplatformed himself. I would have to say I agree. All right. Well, so you agree with Ma Mark Zuckerberg. Thanks. End of video. Too big to fail might become, should become, too big to exist. Hmm. Oh, my God. Please, Glenn, don't, don't do an analogy right now. I don't know that my head could take it. But who's to say that? Um, no one. See, we're in a conundrum. If Are we? It's a conundrum, is it? If you believe in the free market, you believe Coca-Cola and Amazon and, and these high-tech companies have the right to run the... Yeah, I always thought of Coca-Cola as a high-tech company. That whole... That's amazing. I don't even know how they make those Their things. business. But see, this is what they discovered in the 1980s. I think, I think this is the plan in the 1980s was to get with the Tides Foundation. That was a very leftist group that saw the uh -huh. impact of Ronald Reagan and went, holy cow, we got to change the tide. They, one of their goals was to get the, the board of directors in all these big Fortune 500 companies uh -huh. loaded with leftists. Well, they did it. And I don't think... And, and look how big and successful these companies have become. Oh, my God. As a communist, how can I even stay sitting on this board? But the money is just rolling in. This is crazy. We've got more, these companies are more profitable than they have ever been in history. Ever since commies started running half the boards, thanks to the Tides Foundation. We better start doling some of this cash out to black people and people in wheelchairs. Other pit wise people will start to think I'm enjoying this shit. This was by design. I think somebody realized this maybe 10, 15 years ago and went, wait a minute, uh -huh. we don't have to do anything legally. We can do all of this through these giant corporations. Get <laughs> yeah, yeah. You know who realized that? The Koch brothers. The boards to agree. And we'll just put them in policies, and then we'll just stop doing business with people, and it will change. You don't need to change the Constitution. You don't need to go through Congress. You can just vote with your dollar. It's almost like, apparently, commies and lefties in Glenn's world... Um, decided to destroy corporate America from the inside, but the only way they could destroy it was by making it incredibly successful. And, um, and of course, along the way, stealing water rights from all sorts of companies and, and, you know, and, and obviously helping Donald Trump get elected in the social media platform world. You know, so obviously all these, it was all part of the plan. You know, it was all this big Susan Sarandon mole 
uh, army that got inside there. And then they realized, I actually like making all this cash, but I still got to probably give lip service to all this stuff just to cover my ass in this situation. Um, <laughs> so this is, okay. So lefties have been running all these organizations as their profits have increased exponentially. So it's, so it's leftists that have made these companies gain $1.1 trillion just during the pandemic. Thus, the big reset. <laughs> Thus spoke Zarathustra. It's an end run around the Bill of Rights. Is that what it is? The big reset. So they weaseled their way up into these companies, making them more profitable than ever, just so they could scuttle them so that I guess someone could do a hostile takeover and buy the company? And what are you going to do about it? Well, that's what fine. They have a right to do that, right? Yes. Except do you see what's happening? What's happening? An- yes, I see what's happening. You tore your earpiece out of your ear and it's hanging there like some sort of weird booger. Fix it. What, were you off? Were you pitchy on the choruses and you had to pull out your earpiece? End run around the Constitution. If all of these companies decide... Glenn has the end runs. Yeah, we're going to do that. And the government decides to back that. And then social media tries to put everyone out of business that... <laughs> Is that what happens? That what? That Everyone out of business that what? That what, Glenn? Doesn't believe in that? What do you have left? What do you do? So you don't believe in diversity or you don't believe in them having the right to choose firms that are diverse to represent them, especially in legal proceedings, more than likely where the lawyers are representing them against the very people that they want as part of this? Because that's the part that's, that's difficult. That's the part I think a lot of people have uh, um, that it's really dug in there, Glenn, and that you're kind of missing here. Is They want gay attorneys out LGBTQ attorneys so that when they're sued by LGBTQ groups for discrimination or or what have you, they can send a gay lawyer to fight the case for them and go, obviously not. And that when they steal the, you know, Indian water rights, they can send an Indian attorney to do this. Or when they discriminate against black people by gouging prices in, you know, in, in lower, you know, in neighborhoods where they're delivering this stuff, then you know, they can, you know, especially on water during a, you know, a pandemic, let's say, that when when uh, black communities get wise of this thing, they can send a black attorney down there. They've got plenty on call, but there's been a bunch of times where they have been faced with these kind of lawsuits and they, and by God, they have no black attorneys to send to fight off the, the black lawsuit. They have no Indian attorneys to send to fight off the Indian lawsuit. They have no gay people working to send to fight the the gay lawsuit that they're getting from a group of people. So that's why they want the diversity. And while they're doing it, they can make this big statement that allows them to claim that they are entering the diversity movement, when in reality they are choosing these specifically to protect them. Now, I in, in normal circumstances, I would think Glenn Beck would know this and understand the 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 flim flam that is going on because he is a participant in this kind of behavior. But in all honesty, I think simply that ever since Trump lost, Glenn has been in a panic is a, a, like astonishingly ignorant. It seems to be expanding. I don't know if it's fumes from all the flat screens that he's got surrounding him. I don't know if he's allergic to the velour. I don't know if the white hair powder is somehow seeping in through his skin and making him ill. But normally he would know this shit. No females either. Yeah, well, again, if they get if they get a discrimination lawsuit about women that they fired somebody or let somebody go, they want a female lawyer to handle the job. Yeah, you see how this works? That's why you want diversity in your law firms. Because you have diversity in the cases against you. The more racist you are, the more lawsuits you're going to have from those groups that you are discriminating against. And therefore, you're going to want lawyers that look like that group so you have an immediate pushback in court. It is harder for the judge to call your company racist when they dismissed a black 
executive or didn't hire them or stymied their promotion when you send a black lawyer to represent the company. I, I, seriously. It, are we just going to pretend we don't know how this shit works? Really? Am I the only person who sees this? Seriously? Am I the only person who knows how this stuff works? <sighs> Son of a bitch. I, like... And by the way, uh, Glenn Beck is a Mormon, allegedly. And uh, he shopped around for a religion when he got married and wanted to have a kid. And they were going to decide, we want to religion, raise him religious. But Glenn didn't have a religion. So he just looked around for one. And since once you're, if you're a male in, in Mormonism, you're automatically a deacon, sort of. You get promoted right away. There's a hierarchy and a beneficial kind of uh, network that goes on with being a Mormon over other churches. Your average Lutheran has to prove that they're part of it. Um, you know, they're part of a good community. Methodists, same way. Not saying that Mormons are bad at all. I'm just saying it's an it's an auto lift. It's like evangelicals. It's the same thing. It comes with a bumper sticker and a, and a, and a veneer of goodness. You don't even have to behave. You can just live inside that. So that's why he chose it. He just hunted it down. Most people wait for somebody to come and minister to them. He went and, let's go religion shopping. He, he was very open about it. So he's got to know that that a lot of people, you know, corporations included, do presentational things in an attempt to benefit themselves. If you don't believe me, go look up cause marketing. It is why I am often, um, I find it difficult to, um, to do some charity stuff on... Um, uh, online because it looks ham-handed. It's hard for me sometimes to just do it when I when it's normal because I a lot of times when I see it it seems very suspect to me and I wouldn't want to present that myself. So, whew, Jesus, um, I appreciate you guys. Thanks for being there. That was bitter and annoying and gross and uh, oh god. Am, am I a Mormon? No, I'm not. Um, but I do pray and I do believe in God. So there. Um, and, that, and that is my business. Um, and, I, and I'm a big fan of the, you know, um, and, and just in case there's any, you know, right-wingers watching, I, I believe in a benevolent God, not some sort of horned Baphomet kind of character, for the record, just in case you were wondering. So you don't go, oh, yeah, I bet you do. I bet you do. I bet you do. Long tongue, serpent, started out in the Garden of Eden, cursed, that kind of guy. Right. So, um, and, uh, and I'll never forget, there's been a couple of moments where I've mentioned that I am not, and it's, I mean, it's odd that you even have to word this thing, but um, that I'm not an atheist. And... Ron Reagan, who does those ads for the Freedom for, From Religion Foundation, he was with us in Seattle at one of our shows. I think it was Seattle for Sexy Liberal. And he, he basically made the broad sweep that everybody up here is an atheist and therefore, except maybe John, I think it was. And I was like, I am, I'm not, just to be clear. And he seemed genuinely stunned. And, uh, and I was like, yeah what what my beliefs are and how I, uh, you know, what my ethical circumference around my life is, is meaningful and you can see it in my behavior. And it's more important for me to show what my beliefs and ethics are, flaws and all, than it is to, uh, you know, uh, prognosticate and, uh, you know, and, and emote and show off and, you know, brag my religious beliefs to people. So, um, I, you know, for, for my own purposes, it's nobody's business in that regard, but, but it is there and it is a, it is a factor in my life and in my being and who I am and my identity and what I think of myself and how I project myself in the world and what I do with my time. It, it's meaningful. It affects what I do. And 
so when somebody else goes out and shops around like Glenn Beck for their label, I find it incredibly suspect. So there you go. Anyways, um, I adore you guys. I will see you guys tomorrow. Tomorrow's Thursday. Remember, I start an hour later. So hang out, have a snack, and um, and we'll visit then. And um, during that time, I will be doing some graphics for Stuttering John because I don't have enough shit to do. This is crazy. So Mormons don't drink Coke. That's interesting. Um, it's caffeine, right? Right. Hmm. Curious. It's very, it's very telling, do you think? Mm-hmm. Well, I think we've all learned something today, haven't we? Hmm. <laughs>